Okay, we are the 28th of September 2022 and um, I intend to uh, to talk for a few hours and to try to show, uh, to present the formal aspect, the formal presentation of the, the view of the totality, the totality of being, whatever it is, uh, and to show the, the, the structure and the categories, the, the division, the distinction, the, uh, the moments of the totality of being becoming conscious of itself. It's important. And that is, that is God, basically. God is uh, the thought of being, one might say. That's a formal definition. And I will begin. Uh, in order maybe to to attract attention by sharing uh, by sharing books uh, and while I share books I will talk um, and try to to uh, try to um, to express very complex ideas in the ordinary sense to a potentially new audience because I've been making videos for many months and I haven't had any kind of quantitative success in terms of reaching a, a, a widespread audience and even less in, in succeeding in trying to share very complex ideas. So I have given up not on the, the complete rigor but on the, the attempt to uh, to explain everything and I will trust the intelligence uh, of the people. So here we have an anarcho-communist, anarcho-leftist criticism of the uselessness of bureaucracy. And here we have a, a right-wing economically uh, criticism of bureaucracy. So there is the, the anarchist leftist criticism of, bu of bureaucracy and the right wing criticism of bureaucracy. Like with Ron Paul, Charles Murray and John Taylor Gatto, we have some sort of the, the libertarian right leaning criticism and the rather left left wing uh, American uh, criticism of the educational system and I will keep sharing books uh, the, the video will be will be long and I will show the whole process but for now I just share books and I will make a short pause and change the, the picture so I, I imagine that I'm talking to a random person uh, because I, I one of the problems that I have is, is that I don't really know who I am talking to and who knows what, what is the, the level of consciousness of the other who eventually watches my video. So here I, I try to, to incorporate uh, as much information as I can, as many and as, as much uh, in enlightening information and as many information as possible in the smallest amount of time and that's there's a lot of information so the video will be long but to try to find a proper balance between quantity and quality of information and limitation of time so that the persons will eventually find a, an interest in spending uh, I don't know how long the video will be many hours probably uh, but they will find an interest and here I will I will keep promoting books <sighs> let's talk about economics Charles Murray Libertarian in our hands, a plan to replace the welfare state. The big ripoff, how big business steal your money. No, a big business and big government, they steal your money. I imagine that there will be Americans watching this. They are stealing your money. Can you tolerate that? <laughs> Americans, at some moment, they will love me, I think. Yeah, let's hope so. Uh, the problem with socialism by Mr. Di Lorenzo, uh, Italian American or American of Italian origin, and uh, I, uh, 
I came prepared. So here's the libertarian kind of economically right-wing criticism of the problems of socialism. <sighs> the problem with socialism, why socialism is always and everywhere an economic disaster. Uh, egalitarianism versus human reality. Why the worst rise to the top under socialism. <sighs> Etc. Etc. Uh, how socialist regulations make monopolies, minimum wage, maximum folly. Etc. There are other chapters, but then I anticipate here's the uh, because I'm trying to reach eventually. That's one of the ideas that I will develop. That I'm trying to reach eventually the broadest uh, extended possible. Um, uh, mass of person but mostly an anglo-saxon audience at first because i'm speaking in english and here's a left-wing uh, a left-wing english white english an englishman who criticizes from a left-wing perspective uh, the, the the economic policies of the british english left so here's the libertarian uh, uh, right-wing American criticism of socialism and here is a uh, British English left-wing criticism of what they would call neoliberalism so here's a kind of an, an apology of socialism but here I will explain it's very complex it's a uh, he's a trade union activist and a member of labor but he's not typical in a sense that He's kind of an, an old-fashioned socialist in the good sense. Uh, he cares about the working class, the working people of, of all origins. Uh, but he's white. It's important. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's, uh, he's not falling into the trap maybe of the insanity of some mostly white people. Uh, the Madness of Crowds, Gender, Race and Identity by Douglas Murray, another eloquent, well-mannered, intelligent English person. Oh, just make a pause. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the Madness of Crowds uh, by Mr. Murray, the typical English gentleman. I mean, typical, yeah. Praised by Peterson, Dawkins and Sam Harris. So, yeah. And precisely this other typical uh, English gentleman, maybe, I don't know if he's a gentleman, but he's a typical English, uh, he kind of, he doesn't fall into the trap of, of insanity. He's a, a good-hearted and rather intelligent economic leftist with patriotic tendencies. Yeah. And he is praised by Mr. Eric Kaufman, author of White Shift, A book which talks about the ethno-demographic changes in the West and the rise of populism. Already here I can explain a change in uh, demographics brings about a change in ideas and ideology and political views. It, it seems uh, simple, but uh, maybe it, it should be reminded. Uh, also, Charles Murray, uh, coming apart, the decline of white America, the state of white America between 1960 and 2010, uh, yeah, which brings about some all sorts of problems. And here I will use American uh, common sense, maybe the, the best of, of the American tradition, a book praised by Thomas Sowell, who is an Afro-American, who promotes a book which denounces the violence inflicted on white women and white girls in America because of a return of racial violence. So here we have a very difficult uh, situation to explain. And here is a book by another white author, a leftist, in the sense of liberal, uh, partly uh, ethno-masochistic, uh, white fragility, why it's so hard for white people to talk about racism. 
So, what I'm trying to share is that white people, they are very complex because they are all, all layers, uh, various layers of white people. They are what are called the, the insane white leftists. Uh, the ethno-masochistic white leftists, they are partly tied. I mean, this is partly a result of that. Uh, they are the white people who suffer uh, physically and psychologically. Uh, those who suffer economically. They are, of course, uh, they are the, peop the white people who make others suffer. We know the story. Uh, we'll talk about this, but... Uh, they are the, the, the white people who are kind of in a state of anxiety because they learn that uh, by looking at some uh, alternative media or buying these kinds of books that there are ethno-demographic changes and uh, some white people, uh, maybe more and more, they don't want to be replaced, as they call this. And uh, the problem of the question of Ethnicity is, is very difficult to, to talk about. That's why a lot of white people, they try to talk about all sorts of other problems, which are uh, real as well, like the welfare state, the economy, the web of debt. Uh, here it's typical uh, feminine uh, American uh, spirit of freedom. I mean, a woman wrote this book and uh, America is, there are problems in America, but it's a country where intelligent women are allowed and have the, the potential, the right, and the interest sometimes in, in writing books about economics for the good of all those who are intelligent enough to understand that there is a problem with uh, the, 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 the monetary structure. And uh, I kind of, of planned the introduction of the video. No, I will just, uh, I haven't explained what this is. So this is the process of uh, being that I intend to talk about. I should have made this clearer. Yeah, so I will talk about a process in three parts. Logic, because I intend to talk about God eventually. Uh, logic, which is the mind of God divided in three parts. I will show this later in the video. I said it will be many hours long. Then there is nature. And here already the definition of words is important because there is misunderstanding often about what nature is. Nature is simplified to the utmost. Uh, the realm of time, space, um, matter, movement, energy, uh, the, the physical world, the world in which I live as an individual and in which everyone lives, the, 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 the physical world, the material world. It is divided in mechanics, which is the study of the movement. It's not only the study, it's also the properties of the movement of physical objects and physical bodies, physics and chemistry. And uh, why is it written in German? Uh, we'll talk about that uh, later. Uh, organic physics, which includes geology, botanics, and biology, uh, to simplify. And then there is a third moment, which is the philosophy of Geist, of spirit, which is uh, here, I will comment. Uh, it's in return. No, first I will uh, keep promoting my books. Uh, so yeah, there are problems of all sorts. Uh, in the Western world, in America, but in most Western countries. I will talk about that uh, to illustrate from a logical standpoint, but I was talking about American women. Uh, a spirit of independence and, and strength of character and, and the ability to foresee or to anticipate or to, to take care of uh, one's own uh, household is expressed by books like these written by American women uh, the pantry primer uh, that's uh, American uh, common sense intelligence uh, how to make uh, the best out of sometimes uh, limited uh, opportunities 
that's the, the good American economic common sense. And uh, yeah, women in America write good book about economics on a monetary financial scale and on a traditional, here I introduced a little bit of uh, European culture. Economy in ancient Greek means uh, meant with Aristotle uh, taking care of one's own household. And uh, this is household economics and this is economics on a national and even a global scale, uh, the Federal Reserve, written by American women. It should be noted. And uh, now, uh, yeah, so I will comment briefly. So here's the philosophy of Geist. What is Geist? That's a German word which means spirit, but actually it's not the proper translation. It can mean the soul, the consciousness, the mind, and eventually the spirit. And uh, Geist is divided into three main parts, subjective, objective, and absolute. And subjective or Geist means anthropology, namely the study of man, human beings, as partly natural, biological uh, creatures. Uh, so the study of, of demographics, sociobiology, race realism falls into this aspect, but also psychology, uh, psychiatry, uh, psychoanalysis, etc., etc. Uh, and uh, yep, yeah, psychology means intelligence, memory, the faculties of the mind, imagination, language, humor also. So yeah, this is how the subjectivity of man, which is his, his soul, actually, uh, the determinations, the characteristics of the soul. Then, objective or geist contains, das Recht means law, the realm of the universal standard of behavior within a collectively organized society, namely the, the, the rule of law means the, the legislation, the, the, the principles which are made uh, effective and actual through the judicial system and uh, the law enforcement, namely uh, uh, standards of behavior that every citizen of, of, a, of a country has to abide by and to obey in order to enable peaceful, collective interaction. Yeah. Morality is the realm of inner subjectivity, namely how should one behave uh, according to one's own standards of right and wrong, good and evil, uh, reward and punishment, etc. So that's the inner subjectivity, whereas das Recht, law, is made objective, but eventually they reciprocally influence one another. The, the belief and, 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 and ethical standards of a people are made manifest through, through law and legislation and reciprocally the legislation of a country when one enters into a country uh, as a native or as, a, as an immigrant, one has to adopt the, 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 the legislative standards which shape on the longer term the, 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 the individual uh, standards of morality which are also partly influenced by the anthropological determination, namely uh, one's own um, so socio-biological uh, determination. So, yeah, they reciprocally uh, influence one another. And Zittlichkeit is precisely the realm of the realm of economics, mostly, how to collectively here's a leftist uh, perspective uh, how to collectively organize uh, in order to produce, uh, to promote the, the, the material well-being of a society through work, consumption, uh, investment, etc., economics, sociology, it's how the economic interaction of the social agents determine their social position, their status, their role, uh, their, their standards, also of behavior, etc., etc., and politics, how to gain and access power, uh, how to shape law and morality and, and information and, and art and culture eventually. And uh, it includes uh, the family. Uh, so all these aspects, economics, sociology, politics, they include family, the civil society and the state, and eventually the interaction of the state with other uh, agents on a world, uh, on a geopolitical scale. So this is history and geopolitics. And finally, the third moment is absolute Geist, namely absolute spirit. It is the manifestation of the whole process, 
but I will briefly show the whole process of God. So logic, nature, one could say that uh, the realm of Geist, so the realm of human beings, human consciousness in a way, emerges out of nature. That's why humans are natural uh, biological creatures, but they are more than just biological. They are anthropological. They have a soul, a psyche, a mind, a consciousness, which is determined biologically. We'll talk about this later but also exteriorizes itself through institutions and through a collective organization of life that would recall society. And this is the realm of objective or guys. So the, the, the interiority of man is made manifest in not sensuous in any law and morality are invisible and the laws of economics are invisible as well, but uh, they, they manifest themselves through institutions and, and collective um, pr production uh, in a way not on a strictly economic standpoint, but it can be artistic production, uh, uh, moral, uh, moral, um, uh, moral behavior, etc. So the, 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 the interiority of man and of human is made manifest in the objective world. And this is objective of Geist. And finally, absolute of Geist is the consciousness that humans have of themselves, but that also that God has of himself through art. Die uh, Kunst is art. Uh, the Geoffenbart of religion is revealed religion. And finally, the philosophy is the thinking activity which tries to encompass, systematize, and grasp the totality of the process. And I will briefly show. The video will be quite long, but uh, it's important. And uh, yeah. So the whole process, the process of God. Uh, contains the moment of logic, nature, and Geist. And the reason why there are so many misunderstandings is that usually people, when they talk about God, they only consider the, the moment of religion. For them, God is the God of the religion, so the abstraction, living God knows where. That's what people call God. Uh, but they, they completely... Uh, leave aside all the other determinations. Uh, so for them, God, for most people who believe in God, they believe in uh, the God of the Bible or the Quran or uh, the Torah or uh, the, 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 the Indian text or whatever, but uh, they don't think that, that God might reveal himself through art or through law or through morality. Usually religious people, they see the connection between religion and morality, but uh, they, they, they miss the, 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 all the other aspects. Uh, yeah. And for instance, nature, the, the, the creation, the, the, the physical world is a manifestation of God. Uh, yeah. So now I will make a brief pause. Uh, I will not... Uh, do we see? Yeah. I will not edit the video because uh, it would take. Uh, yeah. Do we see? Yeah, we see. Okay. I will not comment this. Uh, smart people, they will understand. And if not, I will explain. But now I keep promoting books to. Yeah. So we're talking about economics. Yeah, I said to myself before making this video. When I am starting to lose it a little bit and become partly insane, uh, in the realm of politics, I ask myself the question, where is common sense? What is right? What is good? And the answer that I found after uh, many years of uh, experiencing the world is, okay, what I call good as of now in this current state of mind is American common sense. What is American common sense? Ron Paul, uh, Charles Murray, and also partly uh, uh, Thomas Sowell, who was uh, an Afro, who still is an Afro-American uh, libertarian. And precisely, they all sh they all share in common common sense, maybe, namely that. Uh, 
certain minimum standards of of expectation in the realm of individual behavior and also collective behavior, economics, morality, ethics, science, they all agree on some fundamental principles in accordance with the idea of, of the American constitution. They may disagree on many other topics. They have diverging interests on other topics, but they agree on some fundamental principles. And uh, yeah, what was I saying? Promoted by Ron Paul, written by Charles Murray, written by Charles Murray. Promoted by Thomas Sowell. Promoted by Ron Paul. Written by Charles Murray. <laughs> Very intelligent, this American. Written by Ron Paul. And uh, yeah, so now there are many problems that I've just partly illustrated. Uh, yeah, no. Charles Murray, Income Inequality and IQ. Charles Murray, a book which was controversial almost 30 years ago, uh, 1994. It's no longer controversial. Uh, it just explained that there is a class hierarchy based upon differences in intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the, the the problems, what one of the, the not the problems, one of the the, the the aspect which explains a lot of the problems that the world, mostly the, the Western world and also America has, is a little bit more controversial, but it explains Richard Lynn, a British psychologist, dysgenics, and uh, yeah, it explains many of the problems that uh, the, 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 the modern world suffers, suffers from. And uh, yeah, so this is for the book that I've been sharing. Uh, yeah, so now I will comment briefly uh, this. Um, UPS. What is universal in ordinary language, it is that which is general and also abstract and that which applies to all or to every, uh, every object, every uh, individuals of, 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 of a class, every, uh, every members of a, of a community, it applies to all and to every one of those who are included within the universal. The particular is a limitation of the universal, namely what is particular is that which is opposed, here is, uh, the, that which is particular is that which is opposed to other particulars, whereas the universal, because it is valid for all, he, one might say, or the universal is only in relation to itself, whereas in the realm of the particularities, the particularization, there are precisely various particular many or some some implies some others many implies few and they are in in a reciprocal interaction uh, and each is limited within its own particularity and is opposed to the others but i talk a little bit abstractly and then i will illustrate the universal doesn't cease to be what it is that's here the the the, the, the arrow here in any of its Particularization, namely, uh, I will talk about libertarianism. Uh, the idea of libertarianism is made manifest, so that would be the universal, in the particular topic which belongs to objective spirit of education, so that's libertarian, the libertarian view on education, 
euh, A Libertarian View on Public Liberty, euh, A libertar Libertarian View on Economics, euh, A Libertarian View on Household Management, euh, A Libertarian View on the welfare state, etc., etc. So all these particulars, they are opposed to one another in the sense that uh, the welfare state uh, is just an aspect of uh, economic policies, uh, the educational system is uh, another aspect, but the, the universal, in this case, the, the idea of individual freedom, property rights, uh, cooperation, um, uh, mutual uh, respect of one another's freedom, etc., is, uh, is made manifest through each of these particularizations. Namely, uh, an individual with a libertarian mindset, he will, thinks, he will think if he's consistent the, the, the same way, whether he talks about uh, the welfare state, the educational system, foreign policy, central bank, uh, individual behavior, etc., etc., and then each... Uh, each um, school in the US is a, a, a singularization, S means singular, a, si a singularization of, um, uh, of a, a particular branch of social life, namely uh, the, the educational system. Uh, each welfare recipient is a singular uh, recipient of uh, the collective wealth distributed for the welfare state, etc., etc. I just illustrate. <sighs> yeah. So, what has to be understood is that the universal doesn't cease to be what it is in its particularization and in another, in another realm. Uh, the human species, every human is human through his universality, but there are particular races of human, particular ethnic groups, and each group is human. They all share in common the universality, but each particular group is different from all the others with, with its own specific characteristics, uh, genetic determinations, which has an impact upon uh, physical features, uh, psychological, intellectual de 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 determinations, uh, history, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, this is how it works, and it works for uh, all the determinations. Uh, in, in biology, the classification is uh, genus, species, individuals. The genus would be the universal, uh, chordata, uh, uh, mammals, uh, primates, uh, homo, homo sapiens, etc., etc. These, are, these can be not in the biological sense, but in the logical sense, these are genus and the inferior uh, in the sense of logical, namely here we would have uh, mammals, uh, primates, uh, homo sapiens, uh, and if the universal is Homo sapiens, uh, the particular could be the various uh, ethnic groups or racial groups or uh, genetic clusters, and each individual would be a singular. So this classification, UPS, can be applied to every object, because every object is a singular, and every subject as well, is a singular with particularis particularities which bind him and tie him or her to a universal. And here it's the syllogism, which is the formal uh, mode of reasoning in classical logic, namely uh, Socrates is a man, men are mortal, therefore Socrates is mortal, namely the universal here is mortal, the singular is Socrates, and the particularity is humans, animals as well. But S is tied with U through the mediation of P. That's the formal aspect of, 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 of reasoning, rationality and logic. Namely, a singular is united with a universal through the mediation of a particular. Yeah. That's a syllogism. Uh, yeah. Uh, so now uh, I will make a short pause. Okay. I will try to illustrate this this idea, which is quite complex, but actually very simple, namely, um, through the internet, any individual can share with potentially the whole world, all those who have access to, to, to an internet connection, informations about himself or about the world or, or about others that 
because they are made public, they are available for everyone. They enter the realm of, of world consciousness, which is one way of envisioning the mind of God. And uh, this is very complex because it means that potentially anyone, any individual can talk to anyone else directly. There's no guarantee that the other, which is supposed to receive the message, will get the message, but potentially uh, anyone can talk directly to anyone else because there is only one web. That's the World Wide Web, and that's a web of consciousness because information is made available in real time. And uh, yeah, now I will be a little bit. Uh, uh, how should I explain this? A little bit of, of scheming for the good. I will. I will scheme against myself probably, but. Uh, I would take the example of women and uh, women and I will take three examples women uh, the educational system and IQ uh, yeah I will take the example of Ron Paul. So, when a book like this is 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 being either being promoted or simply being, uh, uh, being being made available on the internet, and anyone with an internet connection can look on any uh, website and, and, and look that this book is on sale, and they can read the comments. So, there is not just the book written by Ron Paul about. Uh, the broken educational system, there's also the consciousness that people have of this information. Another example, a work of sociobiology about strategies of human mating by Mr. David Booth, promoted by Mr. Pinker. Mr. Pinker could be another example of partly American common sense, but it's more uh, an enlight enlightenment common sense. Uh, yeah, it's enlightenment values, as they call this. Uh, yeah, strategies of human mating. This is uh, a modern, a very recent uh, book on sociobiology, which explains that uh, men and women uh, they have various strategies to try to, to mate and, and to seduce one another. Usually these are the males uh, trying to seduce the female, but uh, yeah. And this explains in, in rigorous modern sociobiological language how it works. And this knowledge is made available potentially to anyone who can afford to buy the book or watch videos. This is just an illustration. Here I will UPS. This is a singular book about a particular a branch of sociobiology. There are other branches of sociobiology. I mean, those studying the processes of the process of reproduction and its impact upon the intelligence of the population. That's another branch. Uh, but this knowledge is made available, and anyone can, if they have the the the, the will, the intelligence, the leisure, or when we talk about leisure, of course, there's the problem of bullshit jobs because there are many people who are too uh, busy working useless jobs for themselves and, and useless for the economy at large. Uh, yes, yeah, so when this knowledge is made available, it changes reality in the sense that, I will take another example, it brings about books like these, uh, which are manuals to teach mostly young men, mostly young white men, <laughs> how to behave in order to seduce the girl that, that they want. And it's kind of a strategic, uh, I would say, a, a romantic warfare, because a strategy comes from an ancient Greek word, which means the general in the Greek armies, a strategy to, to seduce another, 
Uh, here is the, the theoretical aspect by a modern uh, sociobiological scientist. Here is more applied uh, version. It's more uh, in, in ordinary language, but basically there, there's a process here. I, I kind of laugh and I kind of joke, but actually it's very serious. There's a world process which makes information available to everyone and just in the realm of men versus women interactions. Uh, typical uh, human interaction, I might say. <laughs> Uh, men who have the intelligence and uh, do who have the intelligence, the leisure, or the time, they can study how their own psyche functions and how the psyche of of women function, and they can use this information uh, to attain their goal. And this changes reality, because uh, yeah. Uh, another example, a little bit more uh, <clears throat> sinister, one might say, but. It's part of the process of reality. This book, A Billion Wicked Thoughts, it's produced by an individual. It's also, it's also promoted by Mr. Pinker, uh, The Better Angels of Our Nature. Yeah. Uh, what the internet tells us about sexual relationships. That's an example of the impact of the internet, namely, Anyone with an internet connection can look at some of the really uh, weird aspects of the, the human uh, psyche, namely the, 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 the consciousness. Here is just a limited topic, but it works for education, economics, and uh, sociobiology, and the interaction between the two. It works for every topic, but here I chose the topic of sex, because uh, <laughs> I kind of understand partly uh, the human psyche. Namely, in real time is made available the, the trends, the, the, the sexual tendencies of humans are made uh, available on the internet in real time. So everyone knows basically what the others do in their bedroom. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I will not uh, comment too much on that, but that's just to illustrate the process. And now, because I'm trying to, to illustrate very complex ideas, but I will use ordinary example. This kind of knowledge, sociobiological, serious, empirical, namely collecting data, making hypotheses, checking, checking if the hypothesis is, is valid uh, or not, and it's universal. Maybe here I will pick the, I will show the picture again. Okay, it's universal, it's written on the cover, namely he talks about a unified theory of human mating behavior. So unified for all human would be universal. Uh, he talks about uh, tribes from Venezuela, online dating apps. Uh, yeah, so 37 cultures worldwide. So the universal would be human uh, mating strategies and the particulars would be the various cultures. Actually, they are influenced by ethnicity. He doesn't say that, but it's mostly influenced by ethnicity, but the various cultures uh, throughout space and throughout time. There is romance uh, in the modern Western world, sometimes on American campuses or, or dating websites. It can turn uh, into a pretty... Uh, well, not pretty precisely, but uh, kind of uh, uh, negative. But yeah, uh, so there's this aspect, but there's also in the primitive tribes of uh, wherever Venezuela or uh, Africa or Australia or the modern westernized people of the same countries, namely westernized people from South America. Westernized here means technology, uh, democracy, uh, capitalism or whatever. Uh, and also uh, a romantic relationship in the 19th century in Europe or uh, in the 15th century or in the Middle Ages or uh, romance and uh, the strategies of seduction in ancient Greece or in uh, pre-Islamic uh, Persia or in uh, India, uh, whatever. So that would be the various particularization of the universal. Just, just to illustrate, it works for, for every other topic. So yeah, 
a, a book like this, which produces knowledge about how men and women function that they themselves are not aware because only the most intelligent scientists are, are capable of extracting through hard work and uh, intensive uh, collecting of data and conceptualization, etc., the, the, the knowledge, the universal knowledge. But then it applies. Uh, they, here I will illustrate briefly, a scientist, he studies singular cases, this is the sample, he makes empirical, I mean he collects data upon singular cases, uh, up on, on, a, on a particular branch, uh, here it's the relationship between IQ and, and, and economics, here it's human strategies of behavior. Uh, in the book about the educational system, uh, the same, and he elevates uh, by a process of abstraction, uh, the characteristic of the singular case is to extract what is first particular to this group, that's the process of classification, then what is universal, what applies to all. And then once from the, the, the movement from the singular to the particular to the universal has been achieved through a cognitive process of abstraction and intellectual work, uh, that's um, induction, as the Anglo-Saxon would call this, namely from the singular to the universal and a deduction it's the reverse namely it's a process of deducing how the other singulars are and uh, namely what applies to the universal um, applies to all its particularization and to all the singularization of the particular namely what is true of where is the yeah we'll take another example what is true of the bell curve? This is the cognitive stratification of American life, the relationship between IQ and social outcomes, welfare dependency, employment, uh, economic status, uh, degree success in school, uh, single motherhood, uh, crime, uh, demographics, etc. The relationship between intelligence and these various social outcomes, but also between ethnicity and these various social outcomes and eventually the controversial aspect is uh, the relationship between ethnicity and uh, an IQ uh, yeah so um, this is a singular work a singular book studying a singular society American society uh, in the second half of uh, the 20 the 20th not the 21st, but the 20th century, and especially in the 1980s, because these were back then the most recent data when the book was published uh, in the early 1990s. So it's a singular book talking about a singular case, namely second half of the 20th century America, but it's a particular type of society, namely a democratic society, because in democratic societies, the most intelligent uh, if they are, do not suffer from personal problems like uh, psychological problems, health issue or whatever, uh, or discrimination, but precisely uh, in, in, in an open democracy, the most intelligent rise to the top. So that's true in the particular case of America, but it can be logically deduced that once, so here is um, second half of the 20th, 20th century America, uh, a democracy, a liberal democracy in, in the good sense of freedom of opportunity and equality before the law, one might say. And the universal that this book tries to show is that there is a connection between intelligence and social stratification. So once this connection has been established through a logical process of reasoning and gathering empirical data, the reverse uh, process can be applied me to deduce that if it happens in America, it should also happen in potentially all other societies, and if it doesn't, it means that there is a particularity which prevents this from happening. For instance, a, a, a totalitarian or a, an, a, an authoritarian regime which would prevent people from rising because of their political opinions or because of their ethnic origin, that would be systemic racism uh, applied for all, namely to prevent people uh, from elevating themselves in the hierarchy on the basis of legislation and exclusion or uh, on basis on the basis of religious affiliation etc so that would be intolerance in the real sense namely made it manifest through um, through law and, and and right exclude people and this if this is what again this is the case in many countries on this planet uh, the, the connection between intelligence 
and, and rise in the hierarchy could not be made manifest because there would be other factors, particular factors, which would prevent this from happening. But if the theory is correct, uh, countries which have other particularities uh, of, of ethnicity, of religion, namely not the predominantly Protestant white America uh, of the second half of the 20th century, but uh, in, in Asian countries, rather liberal in the classical sense, uh, individual rights, or at least a minimum of collective freedom, it should apply as well. And here, I will uh, pick up uh, one of my other books, just to illustrate the process. I am partly improvising. Uh, I am improvising. But, uh, uh, do I look like a guy with a plan? I, I just do things. Uh, <laughs> Here's, it's, it's very, very, very smart, actually. This is a singular example. If people can understand this, I will be, I will be partly satisfied. <laughs> uh, yeah, so a singular book about a singular case, but with the particularities of many of the particularities of America in the 21st, uh, in the 22nd, uh, in the second half of the 20th century, namely democratic, Western, uh, capitalist, uh, predominantly white, predominantly Anglo-Saxon and Protestant, etc. So that's a singular book. And then many years, not, not many, a few years later, emerges this book, The Global Bell Curve by Mr. Richard Lynn, who is an Anglo-Saxon scientist, which is actually the process of, of deduction. So induction, namely from the singular to the universal, that, we, that is the work of Charles Murray and Richard Hernstein. And the, 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 the deduction process would be, we, I speak, I imagine uh, what Mr. Lean thought, okay, I understand uh, the connection, and now I will, I will test the theory, the hypothesis, namely, that's good Anglo-Saxon common sense, uh, an empirical method, a um, scientific method, based on empiricism, namely, we have the hypothesis, and now we will check if the premises that we have concluded from a process of induction, if they are valid beyond the limited scope of American society and if they apply to other societies as well. And that's what he did in this book. The, the, the empirical da data are lacking because of many, many reasons. It's, 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 it's currently impossible to collect all the data from all the countries because of the modes of communication, the, the, the political limitations, because of ma many reasons, psychological, technological, whatever. But he collected data from societies all over the world and he concluded rather convincingly that the, the connection was valid in every society, not only predominantly white, but in, in society of all races and all colors, and that there was indeed a, a hierarchical structure based mostly on intelligence. So he deduced, he, he tested the hypothesis. It's not always validated uh, perfectly because there are other factors. There is psychology, history, culture, which played, of course, an important role. But the, the, the factor of intelligence is important. and. That's just an illustration, a singular work, and a more universal, and that's a logical process. Namely, it had to happen. Uh, the circumstances made it so that it was Mr. Richard Lynn, but here's kind of a more complex view that I'm trying to, to develop. Namely, someone at some moment had to universalize this breakthrough in science, in political science, and apply this to all other particulars. And that's what this book has done. And of course, this book, they are not perfect. There are many... Uh, the, the data can be sometimes wrong, uh, the, the numbers are not always satisfying, there are problems, etc. But it's, these are breakthrough in sciences because they bring forth a new way of thinking and eventually then it has to be, to be be bettered, to be improved. Uh, and and, and uh, that's the, 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 the way of science, namely, th these are pioneer works. Uh, they, they, they are the, the first to, to, to open the, the the path, basically. So th that's why they are so, so important. And that's why no matter how many, uh, here I think about Eminem, uh, uh, there may 20 million uh, rappers emerge, uh, but no matter how many fish in the sea, uh, it would be so empty without me, <laughs> something like that. I don't know, uh, maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, I don't know, one of his songs, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's an illustration.
And now, now, another illustration. So here, the, the syllogism would be a uh, uh, American society is a democracy. Uh, in democratic societies, uh, the most intelligent rise to the top. Uh, therefore, in American society, the most intelligent rise to the top. That would be the, 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 the syllogism, the, the, the way of thinking. And then the, the other way would be uh, if the most intelligent rise to the top uh, in democracies, uh, so that would be uh, U uh, is P, then this country, whatever Asian or African or uh, European or Southern American country is a democracy, therefore uh, the most intelligent ought to rise to the top in this society as well. And then it might be logically correct uh, in terms of reasoning, but it has to be validated by empirical data by collecting statistics because the universal the, the relationship between the universal and the singular namely the idea that there's a correlation between intelligence and social status in democratic societies this has been obtained empirically but in order to be validated uh, to make sure that the premise is correct the premise is the conclusion i'm not confusing you the conclusion of the work is that there's a connection between the two and now it becomes the premise for future work. And in order to see if the premise is correct, it has to be validated by empirical data. And that's what Richard Lynn has done by collecting data. And it has been rather convincing. Namely, it's not just uh, happening in America. It's uh, in, in most societies where there's a freedom to, to, to rise up the social ladder uh, through one's own merit. Actually, it's not really because there is a divine uh, control at some level. Uh, people are not completely free or not, they are not free because uh, God is in control. That's uh, the Protestant uh, Lutheran uh, absence of, of free will. But uh, people have the illusion that in some societies, the, the most intelligent, the best, the most hardworking, the most competent, the most charismatic, the most, uh, the best, they, 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 they ought to. That's the ideal. They ought to be able to rise. And eventually they have to. That's, uh, yeah, that's uh, the, the, what should happen. Yeah. And it, can, it, can't, it can't happen in socialist, overly, overly socialistic regimes because of the scheming and the manipulations. And that. That's why the, the bureaucrats, uh, usually they, are, uh, they have qualities, but uh, they are not necessarily the best. I mean, they are the best at what they do, but they are not the best as they are supposed to be. That's why bureaucrats, uh, it would be in their best interest to, to simply quit their bullshit job and to do something more interesting, like... Uh, <laughs> I will make a, a little bit of a joke. <laughs> Studying female psyche <laughs> to try to, to seduce the girl that they want. Maybe. That's, that would be one way. Or, or if they are women, uh, here, I, I came prepared. Uh, I have a plan. <laughs> What's the next step of your master plan? Restoring traditional womanhood. So, the women who have really bullshit jobs, it would be in their interest to become traditional American women, but it's just traditional women, but it's more predominant, or it was more predominant in American societies, and Studying these books, for instance, a fascinating womanhood. <sighs> Let me be a woman. This is what the kind of traditional common sense female American uh, wisdom. No, it's not very uh, okay. I, re I reformulate traditional feminine American common sense uh, used to believe in. Yeah. Very, uh, very resourceful, uh, these American women. <laughs> that's a joke for myself. Uh, that's why uh, this kind of behavior, uh, they have to stop eventually. Uh, yeah, they, they have to stop. Yeah. Uh, what was I saying? So yeah, I've presented my books. Now I will just conclude with one book. Mm. Yeah.
by uh, Mr. Uh, Christopher Rachels. Yeah. So now I have introduced my books for about one hour. That my introduction is one hour, but uh, now I will work on. Uh, I will work on um, talking about the view of the totality, which is God. But I will just take a short pause, and I come back in just a few minutes. Um, I've just taken a break, and uh, every time that I encounter <laughs> what I call empirical people, uh, I get a reality check, because I just realize how far removed uh, from ordinary consciousness my ideas are, even though I try to really uh, simplify and make accessible. But so what I call American common sense in, in the sphere of politics, this is what some sort of uh, make me a uh, recover maybe my my mind i suffer from german uh, <laughs> german uh, insanity partly but uh, american common sense is here to to stabilize me uh, politically maybe and uh, there's a song i i, I associate this with somehow uh, really the uh, charles murray ron paul like uh, every time uh, we we connect, not every time we touch, but every time we connect, uh, you make me rise when I fall. Yeah, so now we'll skip to the, the structure of uh, what I'm trying to share. Okay, so I am trying to share a very complex worldview really simplified and I will briefly comment I have already done this many times and I've said to myself and I will do this as long as I can work calmly and peacefully I will keep improving what I call now my system but precisely I don't know how long I will be in a position to to improve the system but I will as long as I can and improving includes involves uh, being able to to express myself more clearly more simply and more efficiently harder better faster stronger uh, to to express very complex ideas in a more intelligible way and to find the proper balance between extreme complexity and intelligibility i'm still far away from having even remotely reached uh, the goal, but I am improving. I don't know how long I will be able to, as long as I can, I will do this. And um, I have picked links. So here I will not make a systematic comment. I will just explain as briefly, it will take probably uh, at least a couple of hours, we'll see, but this is the process of God formally presented and represented the process of God, which the formal de definition that I have is the totality of being becoming conscious of itself. So there is being, in ordinary language, the universe and becoming conscious of itself, namely thinking about itself, reflecting upon itself. The universe becoming conscious through human consciousness, precisely. And there are three main parts. I will not systematically comment. I'll try to make it as short as possible so that just that people might be interested in my holistic, total, maybe totalitarian worldview. So here we have logic, the mind of God. God is at first, I simplify, it's not chronological, but a mind, a, a, a thinking entity. That's the definition of Aristotle. 
self-thinking thought. So God is a pure mind. It contains the categories, which are the, the building blocks of reality as well as of mental activity. The mind is structured by the categories, quality, quantity, measure, existence, essence, identity, difference, diversity, positive and negative, opposition, cause, effects, substance, accidents, uh, possibility, necessity, contingence, etc., etc., and the concept, singular, particular, universal, the object, the ID, etc., etc. So this is the mind of God. The mind of God, pure thought, pure intellect, pure intelligence, exteriorizes itself somehow. I'm not able to explain how it happens. I have to conclude logically that this is how it happens, but makes itself manifest, gives itself a presence, a sensuous existence, uh, that which we call nature, which could symbolically be the creation of the world. Namely, the world emerges out of the mind of God, here in ordinary language, God would be, in this sense, the architect, both the creator by bringing forth a world and also the architect by designing mathematically and logically the world. That's one way of talking. So nature, here to define the words is important. Really simply, nature, I bought, <laughs> here I'm in a mood to laugh, but I bought a plant this morning just to illustrate when when we use the word nature in ordinary language actually i don't know what people think precisely because as an empirical individual i do not talk to people or very not very often but i i can anticipate that people when they speak about nature they think about the trees the birds the rivers the forest the mountains uh, the landscapes or whatever it's partly true, but nature, defined philosophically and rigorously, is at first the world of time, space, matter, movement, energy, and eventually all the subsequent laws of physics, so the, the, the world of relativity and, and quantum physics in ordinary language. So nature is the spatio-temporal world. And in the spatio-temporal world, there are not only trees and birds and rivers, there are also rocks, and, and, and uh, atoms and molecules of oxygen, uh, wool, and, and clouds, and, uh, and, 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 and planets, and stars, and, 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 and physical objects. And what people unconsciously think is living nature, like trees and plants and animals, etc. But precisely this plant is not natural. I mean, it's an, orga an organism, it's not plastic, but it's selected, it has been selected by a very long process over the centuries, but especially by the, whoever produced this, it has been selected uh, and, and, and um, modified in a way like most animals. Here, I make a brief commentary about nature. That's one of the problems because the people, they, they won't find this interesting because we don't see. So now I have to... <sighs> yeah, that's one of the problems that I have. I focus everything on the intellectual content. Although from an intellectual standpoint, what I say is not very rigorous. It's not very serious. From I mean, it's serious, but not as rigorous as it should be. But then I, I skip the aesthetic aspect. No more uh, complain. I explain. So these are, I will not comment. People can read if they are interested. What I'm saying is that the animals and the plants and the landscapes that we ordinarily see in most surroundings, they are natural in the sense that uh, there are no buildings and, and, and plants in the sense of factories and, and chemical plants, not uh, vegetable plants, but uh, factories. And, 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 and shops and, and buildings and, 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 and roads and uh, rail, railroads, etc., etc., that in the ordinary mind is nature where there are no human influences, but actually most of the natural as opposed to artificial landscapes 
in developed countries and in most countries where there is human settlement, they have been artificialized by human activity. The animals, uh, most uh, domestic animals, they are natural in the sense that they are living organism, but they are not natural in the sense that they are the product of a process of selection, a conscious process of selection by humans, conscious or unconscious. Darwin already knew this. So yeah, there's the ambiguity about the word nature. So here I'm going to introduce what nature is. No, I see the full picture. Nature in the formal presentation is what is in green. Here we have the first part, which is mechanics. Here, one, two, three. So these, these three sub parts are the second part, which is called physics. I will explain. And here we have the third part, which is uh, organische physik, which we call geology, biology, zoology. The study of planet Earth as a totality, the study of plants and, 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 and organic vegetal life, and the study of organic animal life. I simplify to the utmost. Plants and animals and the planet. Here it's the, the qualitative aspect of physics and chemistry, namely the interaction and the transformation of the material world of matter through chemical reactions, heat, sound, light, temperature, uh, ele electricity, magnetism, etc. And here the, the first part is abstract quantitative physics, the study of movement and the, the astronomical cosmological movement. I will detail more, but this is what would be nature. Then, out of nature emerges man, which, as I've showed earlier in the video, is anthropologically determined. And here, the naturalische Seele, the natural soul, all the parts in purple, pink, purple here, they, they deal about the topic of the soul. The soul of humans, the anthropological determination. So the soul is partly united with the body. So all the aspects here in pink and purple and here and here and here, these are the determinations of subjective ergeist, which means subjective spirit, and they encompass and incorporate here and there the study of the soul, which includes sociobiology, sex differences, uh, race realism, um, uh, the, the, the psychic faculties and also psychological determinations, collective life on an anthropological level, not in the realm of institution, but in the realm of human interaction and the inner faculties of, of the interiority of the soul. Here, the second moment is the phenomenology, namely the way that the soul relates to itself as an object, which that which we call consciousness, the awareness of an other, which is a reflection of the self, partly. Uh, and finally, psychology, the study of the inner determinations of the mind, uh, intelligence, character, temper, partly emotions, uh, tendencies of behavior, interpersonal relations, partly, etc., etc. So this is subjective or geist. I, I repeat, I simplify. Logic here, the mind of God. Nature is the body of God made manifest, the, the physical world. And out of the physical world, this is the official uh, chronological, cosmological, evolutionary perspective, Darwinian evolution, that man, I mean, first life, and then uh, complex, organized, uh, highly organized, highly diversified, highly complex life emerges out of primitive self -repli re -repli -repli replicating cells. So a chemical process of, uh, um, uh, of uh, interconnection of, of, of molecules, of, of chemical um, arrangements of molecules produces self-replication, that which we call life. This is the official narrative. And eventually life develops over the billions of years to, to become more and more complex to produce man. That's the official narrative. And this is also the logical order, partly, of 
the totality of the process of God. So here we have subjective geist, like I've said, and man as a as a human, not just as a, as an animal, uh, man as a, as a zoological creature belongs here in a way, uh, logically, and as a as as a anthropological, namely man, not as an animal, but as a, as a human, and as a psychosocial, psycho not psychological, but psychosocial, this is the beginning of socialization, but within the ethnic group, in a way, within the, the close biological kin, kinship, uh, it unfolds collectively and mostly individually, the, the psyche, and then eventually the, the psyche, the soul of man, exteriorizes itself in the realm of institutions, and this is what we have here, mostly in blue, in the middle, this is the realm of all the human institutions, uh, family and marriage, education, economics, sociology, politics, morality, uh, technology, which is a sub-branch of economics, and eventually uh, politics, government, legislation, etc. And finally, I will show some of the, the determinations. Uh, yeah, here we have economics. These are determination of economics. I will show the full picture later and then in in uh, yellow we have i will comment uh, not systematically and very rigorously but broadly later uh, we have a uh, determination of religion and art and eventually science in a way which is philosophy which is the self conceptualization of the totality so if i had to show the whole process the process of god if you have followed the video up until now, you should know that God is not just the God of the religions. This would be here. Uh, but God is the process of the totality, which includes logic, nature, and spirit divided in subjective, uh, I mean subjective spirit in, yellow, in um, pink and purple, objective spirit in blue, and absolute spirit in clear yellow. Okay. Now, I will not. I will begin with the study of, of nature and I will eventually uh, study logic briefly later. My purpose with this video, and as long as I publish videos like this, I don't know, is to make a rigorous way of thinking, a very demanding way of thinking, uh, eventually intelligible to the intellectual elites. Because this is the, the proper and formal way of thinking, but there are specialists. And why would they be interested in a random guy uh, who makes video on, on YouTube with uh, 23 subscribers as of now and uh, between 5 and 15 uh, views uh, for each video? Uh, but because what I say is serious. Uh, but also my purpose is to make this intelligible to the broadest masses possible, but there are limitations due to lack of time, lack of intelligence, uh, lack of education. I try to balance, but uh, yeah. So I will comment, not systematically, but I let people... Uh, I let people read. I will, I will uh, zoom close enough so that people can read. So here is... I agree, aesthetically, it's not very satisfying, but that's the best that I've been able to produce as of now and as long as I can or have to, I will improve aesthetically in terms of intellectual uh, intellectual standards. But as of now, I've decided to publish to make this intelligible. Yeah. So the first division of nature is mechanics. Here it's written in German, but I speak English. Mechanics. What is nature in the most abstract sense? How is it divided? How should we qualify? What do we mean? What do we talk about when we talk about nature? And as I will show throughout the process, without commenting too much, uh, we have to use categories. And here, if people find this boring, I have introduced songs. They can pause. They can listen to these songs. If you are, if you find yourself in a position where you have an internet connection, you are watching this video. You can look and listen to these songs. They are great. Uh, it's free. 
I mean, you have there's the price of the internet connection, but if you have an internet connection, you have already paid or someone has paid for you. Now you can freely listen to music. I will use a, a trick to 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 <laughs> to make people interested. Avril Lavigne, she's very attractive. You cannot be denied. She's very attractive. She sings well. She's kind. She's funny. Her psyche can reveal some pretty annoying aspects, especially in this song. This is a female psychology. Uh, I, exp I will explain why this song appears here, but yeah. But this is a great song. <sighs> yeah, it can, if it can help share knowledge. Well, if I have to use Avril Lavigne to get people interested in, uh, in physics, uh, yeah. Okay, so here are the categories which are the, the, the mental structure used by the mind to think about reality, to order structure to make reality intelligible. What are we doing here? What am I doing here? What is the world? What is what is this exteriority, this, this presence? How do I think about it? I have to use the proper categories. I will not systematically comment, but I have spent quite a time translating into English. People can read. Here I will make a little bit of a, of a joke. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully, I said, because I said uh, English people, they can read. Hopefully they can. I'm not sure because <laughs> if you mix this with this, I'm not sure that the English speaking people, they can still read. That's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> I know intellectually what I owe to the English speaking people so that's just a joke but yeah so here are the categories uh, of what so for first the first division is mechanic the first division of the the mechanical aspect is time and space and it is divided in three space time uh, position and movement i will not systematically comment but people can see what at first, it's the most abstract. What is nature? Let us begin with the basics. Nature is space, the dimension, uh, points, lines, surfaces. This is really the most basic. Those who think nature are the trees and the birds, well, the trees and the birds, they exist within space. They exist in three dimension or maybe 10 dimension as the most recent string theory uh, of the very smart physicist uh, want us to believe maybe it's true maybe there are uh, 10 dimensions or even more or, or less whatever, or whatever but first the, here i will use my own uh, understanding if someone wants to know what is this it's a plant uh, a flower in a way what is it what is a plant it's a vegetal organism what is a vegetal organism? It's an organism. What is an organism? It's a body. What is a body? Uh, here, uh, that's a philosophical uh, question. They are the, the bodies of the physicist and then the bodies of, of the philosopher. It's uh, a, a substance with a form, a shape, and, and dimensions. We abstract more and more that UPS and the most abstract a determination of natural, what, which means physical object, is space. So here, these, this is a process. Here I will make interesting remarks from a philosophical standpoint. The process of nature, these categories, they are not randomly chosen. They might be modified, changed, improved, etc. But the process is a process of determination and qualification, a process of giving itself a content. So in the beginning, in the logical beginning, nature is very abstract. It's just space, empty space, and it determines itself how, why. Here, that would be too complex. I just share the proper categories. People can read here. It's in German. Here, it's in English. Here, it's in French. Yeah. So nature, put very simply, is space, time, position, and movement. Uh, yeah, and here this song, I put it this here because the material world would like to 
uh, grasp the mind and the mind would like to grasp the material world as well but uh, matter the physical world kind of expresses itself through this song because here there's a metaphysical connection between the feminine principle and uh, the, the the material world <sighs> no you're in you can't get out yeah that's a kind of a Christian view, the fall, we are trapped within, I mean, I am trapped within the physical world and I can't get out. And uh, love hurts and women, they make men suffer because the material world is that which enables to experience the good aspects of physical presence and also the negative ones, namely uh, suffering and pain. Yeah. It's a mixture here of pop culture, metaphysics, physics, and, and philosophy. So here are, and that's what I said, the, the qualifications of matter is sensuous and visible, for instance. So here are the categories of mechanics uh, that we find in Newton and in classical and even modern mechanics. Okay, I will take, I do not comment, I let people read. So the first part divided in three subsections, the first A, the second B, and the third C. So we have just seen broadly uh, the first Roman side, so space and time. Then the second is matter and movement, finite mechanics. Here are the fundamental determinations, attraction and uh, gravity. I'm not sure that is the proper translation, but the German words, they are correct, but the translation, it can be improved. So here are the determination of matter from a physical standpoint, uh, inert matter. So I let people read. Uh, we find this in, in mechanics. This is how nature is at first mechanically determined. Uh, yeah. So what is valid at this level? Time, space, movement, uh, bodies, masses, uh, inertia, contact, etc. It's valid for what people ordinarily call nature as well, namely the birds, the trees, the rivers, the mountains, the forests, whatever. It's just here, it's more systematic and more rigorous and more serious. It's not very serious because I do not show the logical connection, but just the first moment here, it's a little bit more difficult to write. It's a mechanistic presentation, namely the parts, the categories, they are put together, because I just copied the work of Hegel, but I do not see the interrelatedness and, and reciprocal interaction. So in this sense, it's not very serious, but it's the, the first moment, namely to know something by heart. If it has to be known, it's better than not knowing at all. And here I can make a religious comment. People who mindlessly repeat religious slogans, whether they are Muslims, Christians, Jews, or, or Buddhist or whoever who just repeat mantras or verses of their holy book, that's the first moment. But if they do not understand or in the realm of left-wing uh, white insanity, repeating slogans like diversity is our strength, uh, we are all one, whatever, uh, it's stupid if, if people do not understand the meaning and most of them, they don't. But actually, it's, it can help. It's a mechanistic way of, of understanding more complex ideas. So that's the first moment. Okay, so here are determinations of inert matter, then determinations of, of contact. Uh, here it's communication of movement. Yeah, gravity, weight, speed. So uh, there's, a, there's a, a conceptual distinction in ordinary sense between the mass and the weight. Uh, in physics, it's important. Uh, the, the mass is inherent to the object. The weight depends on gravitation. Namely, people have the same mass on the moon and on the earth, but not the same weight. <sighs> then there is speed and acceleration. These are different. In ordinary language, they are confounded in, in physical serious physical work, they have to be distinguished. So yeah, these are the, the broad category. And in order to think rigorously about physics and about the, the physical world, one has to use eventually these categories. And the modern physicists, they do this. They just do not systematically organize. I mean, they are very rigorous, but not 
as rigorous as the Germans. And here it's not German rigor. Here it's just a... How do you call this? Uh, ersatz. Uh, like a... No, it's not really a, Yeah, whatever. So here, the third moment, absolute mechanics. Here are, for instance, the categories of Newton. Uh, so gravity, acceleration, inertia, the forces or the interactions in modern language, and eventually the laws of the celestial movement. So this is how here, this, this, these part, these first three parts of the first part of the process of nature. And here, I will try to show. So nature is whatever is in green, one, two, three. I simplify to the utmost and we have just seen broadly the first part. And now to make things intelligible, tra translated into ordinary language, uh, the branches of the sciences which refer to what we've just seen are these, they may, they may be more, they may be divided even further, even with even more accuracy, but usually they would be relativity, geometry, uh, partly numerology, because there are numerical connections within nature. So it's not really a science, but it can sometimes help. Uh, mechanics, dynamics, quantum physics, nuclear physics, astronomy, astrophysics, and cosmology. So here, I have just showed, here I talk to, to, to anyone actually, but uh, really to the smart people, but trying to, to express a very complex idea. In order to think rigorously about the physical world, one has to have the proper conceptual structure and to properly use the, 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 the mathematical conceptual determinations of the modern sciences and to simply order them rigorously. That's where philosophy, here it's not arrogance, it's simply a truth, where philosophy uh, is more important than the physical sciences. I mean, they complement one another, but eventually philosophy is a serious thinking activity and it has to have the upper hand over the simply empirical sciences. This is where Germany trumps England and, and the US. Uh, yeah, but uh, the Germans, they have great philosophers, but also great physicists and, and, and scientists as well. Uh, quantitatively, the Anglo-Saxon, they have more, but they have no philosophers of the standard of, of uh, Leibniz, uh, Schelling, Hegel, etc. <laughs> yeah, and now I will develop a very complex idea, but express in very simple language. There are the two moments this is what I try to express with the seduction process of women, with the educational system. Uh, I, will, I will put this again. <laughs> I like, uh, I'm in a mood where I, I, I like playing with women. Uh, this may not always be the case. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the kind of playful mood of inter, inter, interactive reciprocal interaction between men and women, it's the kind of mood that Avril Lavigne in her song she talks about. It can be painful. Yeah, but uh, let us laugh uh, while, uh, while we can. While promoting science. I illustrate with women. Here's how males and females behave on a socio-biological level. So this is in the language of philosophy, I try not to make things too complex. This is ontology, although it's sociobiology, but from a philosophical standpoint, it's ontology in the sense that this is how things are. How do males and females, men and women, behave in their strategy of human mating? What, what are the determinations of, of, of reality or ontology? This is how things are. But then, here it is a little bit more complex. It's not really complex. Even an Anglo-Saxon scientist could follow uh, the reasoning. <laughs> there is the moment of ontology, how things are, and the moment of epistemology, namely, that's a technical term to say, the theory of knowledge, how we, we come to know how things are. And epistemology is related to the theory of consciousness. So, 
it's not enough to say this is how things are. This is very good. And here it's, I don't know if Mr. David Booth is an Anglo-Saxon, probably, but at least he has an Anglo-Saxon culture. And that's very good. That's real serious work. That's the that deserved praises. But it's just ontology in the sense that the Anglo-Saxon, it's recurrent throughout their, 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 the history of, 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 of England and, and the, the, the Scotland. It's not, they see the object, but they do not see themselves as understanding the object. That's where their limitations come. Any day, they understand uh, what they talk about, but they do not understand that they understand. Because here we enter the realm of speculative thinking, and they do not understand that. And here, quantum uh, physics comes to the rescue. Uh, that's probably what... Uh, uh, Werner Heisenberg, here maybe the, the, those who study uh, quantum physics, maybe they understand it. When, when something, a particle in the case of quantum physics, is observed, it changes the ontological status. That's basically what I've understood about quantum physics. And here it's the same, namely when males and females, or uh, uh, let us be leftists, when uh, the, 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 the left, the white leftist uh, in the Western world, when they are observed, they change because the consciousness of those who observe changes as well. And the consequence, uh, here I will use my, my moderate books. <sighs> yeah, the consequence. Here I try to make logical connections. The consequence of the behavior of white leftists, white leftist elites being observed, here it's a white working class critique and there can be a white left-wing working class critique and there can be a white right-wing working class critique Th this is important it's from a white perspective from a right-wing perspective but from a working class perspective that would be charles murray charles murray is not a working class person he's he has a high so so social status that he has her, her earned through intelligence and hard work, etc. But he defends the, the working class, not in a leftist way, but in a right-wing way. So, yeah, the, 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 uh, the, the observation of the situation brings about... I mean, here the, the logical co the connection is not uh, really... Um, because they, 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 America and England, uh, kind of a socialist and a libertarian, but basically what I want to express is that when an object is observed, there is not just the ontological status of the object, how the object is, but also the epistemological relationship, namely, consciousness becomes aware of the object, and it, it becomes aware that it becomes aware of the object. That's self-consciousness. I will try to keep things simple, because if I enter into Hegelian speculation, I could lose myself. And that's where I would need American common sense to keep uh, my feet on the ground yeah so what i want to say uh yeah simplify no with the example of women let us continue with women so this book about ontology in technical language it brings about changes in consciousness then intelligent people well a little bit of uh, kind of schemers they see hey but women they are being uh, I will make a dubious joke. Uh, they, they, they are being undressed epistemologically. Epistemologically. <laughs> the scientists, they are uh, making women naked from a sociobiological standpoint because there, there are no secrets. And men as well. But men, they are, they, they, they are more schemers than women. So they will use the information to try to scheme and to manipulate, etc. They understand how male and female interactions work on a sociobiological level, and the consequence uh, is books like these, which try to explain young males how to behave in order to get and seduce the woman that they want, and this brings about a change in collective consciousness and a change in behavior on an individual level, but also on a collective level, because when a book like this is being published, uh, the feminist nonsense it was not nonsense, but now, retrospectively, it becomes nonsense because it, it doesn't fit no longer the, the current state of reality. Uh, and it, the, go, the same goes with uh, discoveries about, about IQ or about psychology, which 
kind of render useless the former educational system because new knowledge is made available. And now the, the, the educational system has to upgrade, to adapt. And so do men who want to seduce women when they understand how the female psyche work, they have to upgrade their, their competitive game in order to get uh, the prize. Oh, is they... <laughs> I'm gonna have problems if I start uh, saying that women are some sort of a trophy in a competition. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So what was I saying? Uh, yeah, the good, the good aspect, the the negative aspect is that. Uh, men can use this new knowledge to become schemers and manipulators, etc., and deceivers and really uh, negative. But also, women who are smart, they can understand, well, we don't stand a chance. I mean, maybe they do, but <laughs> we would rather go back uh, where we belong, not in the kitchen, but uh, in the household, for the better, but not being a stupid, uh, I mean, well, I say what I think, not being old-fashioned, stupid women who are oppressed by their husband, but women, here it's very important, women who are smart enough to read these kind of books and say, well, sociobiology tells us that actually uh, being in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in, in the, the social industry, whatever, being a secretary or a, sales women uh, to, 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 to waste our time to, I mean, not all of them, but some jobs are really useless. We don't, we don't really belong here. We would be happier uh, if we were traditionalists. And that would bring order, uh, at least a little bit of order, uh, back to society. That's an illustration of a epistemological, phenomenological, logical, ontological, philosophical, religious process. <laughs> Here I laugh because the level of complexity. Here, well, I say what I think so that I might understand myself, and eventually, if people are interested in understanding me some someday, or I don't know. But here, what I'm saying, it's really uh, level five out of one hundred of. Uh, epistemological complexity. I know that Hegel, uh, the writings of Hegel in his best moment, he can go uh, level 100. Here, uh, level 5, it's already uh, whatever. So, yeah, what I want to say is actually that the idea that I want to, to express is that there is a reciprocal interaction between ontology and epistemology, between thought and being. That being is not just what it is, it is thought. Here, the English language is kind of limited, namely, it is thought about. I'm not saying ontology or being is a thought, I'm saying it is thought about, it is considered, it is observed, but not visually, cognitively. I mean, visually as well, and here is where quantum physics uh, is important, because the, the physicists, uh, they understand this basically problem. I'm, I've not studied quantum physics uh, on a quantum level, <laughs> that's a joke. No, seriously, I haven't studied thoroughly uh, quantum physics, but I understand what the physicists do not even understand because they have no philosophical uh, background. And here, I used to, I, 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 I often I, I, I fall into the the, the trap of, um, of, of German arrogance, but the Anglo-Saxon, they, they can be arrogant as well uh, by saying, uh, we don't need philosophy, uh, empiricism uh, can make it uh, all the way through. Yeah, but empiricism is a philosophical doctrine uh, which is unaware of itself. Yeah, so here are... Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah. what I want to say is basically one of the, the most simple, which is also one of the most complex ideas that I try to share is that reality, ontology, being, let us call this reality, is not just what it is. It is in relation to the subject which thinks about reality and this reciprocal interaction is the process of consciousness and one of the problems I mean uh, it's partly a problem but it's also a solution maybe that people they they understand so, some of them they don't understand but some of them 
they see and they, un and they understand the world, certain topics, but they do not understand that they understand. That's their limitations. That's where I enter the picture to try to explain to them. So what I would like to share now, these names, uh, there, I could, there could be many more. So nature is not just the physical world. It is also the history of science. And here we have the, div the, the divide between ontology and epistemology or science. Namely, na nature is the way it is, but also nature has an epistemological history, namely, officially, the history of all the scientists which have thought about nature. And the two aspects have to be taken into account. And in the modern world, on the internet, there are conferences on YouTube and books, which can be bought, but they are here, they are free. Uh, people can watch the, the, the most up-to-date knowledge about the structure of the physical universe, about astronomy, astrology, cosmo uh, not astrology, astronomy and cosmology. Uh, and it's made accessible. And if I'm in a good mood, uh, maybe it will not last, but while I'm in a good mood, I try to share light. <sighs> Basically, the, the, a lot of, of the so, social, uh, social, social fabric in the realm of objective spirit is, is a waste of time. It's a waste of time, it really is. If people could understand that they are wasting their time by, by working stupid jobs, and that they can, if, if they can, here the people, they have to work a little bit. I cannot be, I cannot do all the work. Uh, actually, that's the opposite. I am the parasite and they are the workers. But, but they, on a, in, a, in a certain way, on a philosophical way, a level, I am the worker. And uh, the people, they are kind of the, the sleeping masses. If they could just understand that. The whole knowledge of cosmology is made available. If people, they, if they could just realize, but we are working stupid jobs. Not all jobs are stupid. And those who have an important job, they better, they would, they, they, they had better keep working. You should better keep working. <laughs> you really have to because, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, seriously, no, it's serious. Uh, here, YouTube channels, uh, conferences by modern or past scientists, songs which talk about the cosmos. There is, there is beautiful music. There is rigorous science made intelligible. Uh, there are physical, here we see the, the high level um, uh, theoretical thinking. I, it's not complete. That's what I'm saying. I could spend, I could work. Uh, 16 hours a day for the next 50 years trying to improve the system. But I have reached a point where reality moves so fast. There are so many problems within reality that I have accepted and I, I accept to share my current view, which is far from being uh, complete. But all the journals and publications of all the countries, of all the eras, uh, 20th century, 19th, uh, 18th, 17th, etc., all the songs which talk about the universe, uh, all the, 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 the important scientists, but eventually all the, 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 the YouTube channels about sciences, etc., they can be listed. And that is the mind of God, basically. So here it's really the simplified view. Yeah. Okay, so I just know, I try to, 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 to show the broad picture. We have logic. I've just spent uh, many minutes talking about the first part of nature. That's really the formal view of the totality. Now I will take a pause, drink a glass of water, and uh, keep commenting uh, the second part of nature. <clears throat> I've just taken a, a two or three minutes uh, break, and now I'm in a mood, because uh, when I start talking about uh, about logic or about the system, maybe sometimes I get a little bit heated up. Now I have cooled down and I become more negative. I 
I'm frustrated because here I, I will be honest <laughs> because most people are stupid it's not their fault I know that it is my fault on a transcendental level and I've been frustrated because on an empirical level but maybe on a metaphysical level as well I have an ec on an empirical level I have an excess of money I've had an excess of time I have wasted time in my life uh, I, mean, I have an excess of money because I am privileged I have an excess of knowledge that I fail to share with the people that I would like to share my knowledge with eventually everyone but specifically those who might have the, the cognitive ability to understand and, and to, to talk peacefully with me so I have this frustration and I have an excess of intelligence although I'm not as smart as uh, the really smart people on an empirical level I'm still m smarter than most people I have realized this over the past year and uh, when I try to share my, my ideas in a simple way with empirical people the, the answer that I am given most of the time is they don't have time precisely or uh, yeah so I'm kind of frustrated. So now I, I use this opportunity to 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 spill my negativity. Namely, th th there are many idiots in the world, and I, it's my fault. And I am smart enough to understand that intelligence is a burden, and it's not their fault. But if the idiots could become smart, uh, somehow this would appease my suffering. I would say that. Whether I would I, I were good or bad, if I were bad, I would say seeing the idiots become smart would make me uh, happy. And if I were good, I would say the same thing as well. <laughs> Basically, let's cut the crap. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is to uh, not to redeem my soul, but to do what I think would be good at this moment, namely to, to share my excess of, of wealth with others. And uh, if I succeed somehow, maybe my suffering will be uh, appeased, partly at least. I might consider this as a success. But here, my negative self, that's what I thought just uh, two minutes ago before uh, restarting the video, is that I will be serious here. Uh, all these achievements in science, physics, uh, the internet, the conferences, the songs which help spread the interest for science, 95% it comes from Europeans. Not Europeans of Europe, but anthropological Europeans. That's my way of... Uh, solving uh, the problem because I understand that a lot of people have problems with whiteies and there are reasons to be uh, yeah but uh, when I'm serious uh, the, 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 the overwhelming uh, proportion of uh, artistic and scientific achievements are the products of Europeans but the problem is that the current world is in such a state that these treasures of knowledge and human accomplishment they are the, the, the property of a select few although they are public officially and they are but the economic conditions are such that uh, very few people have the possibility or the, the, the cognitive yes my negative self that um, a lot of people on this planet uh, they suffer economically but they are also limited because of IQ distribution that's how things are and eventually people will have to, to know this truth uh, and I, this makes me suffer because I feel responsible for both and I try to I cannot uh, biologically upgrade people but cognitively maybe and uh, that's what I will try to do so here I will make a pause Okay, I forgot my negativity. Now I will comment uh, the second part of the process. So here is 
I first I showed a broad picture. It's not very aesthetically pleasing, but it is to enable people to keep track of the whole process. So we have the first part, the mind of God. This is logic. The second part, which is nature, it's here. Actually, it's everywhere. <laughs> that's a <laughs> that's a scientific joke. Precisely because everywhere, where is a position, and if you have followed the lecture, you know that nature is determined by having a position. It's within time and space. Oh. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Very funny, uh, the guy who designed the, the English language. Uh, yeah, so the second part is nature, and the third part Probably it's here, it's Geist, which is spirit, but spirit is not the proper translation, it's Geist. So nature, the second part, is divided in first part, the first part of the second part. Hopefully you can follow. <laughs> I'm not trash talking people who are limited, I'm trash talking those who have an IQ above 115. And uh, if they can cannot follow this, uh, there's a problem that uh, I cannot solve. So that's the first part of the second part. These three green subdivisions are the second part of the second part. So the second part of the second part is divided in three parts. It's a little bit annoying what I'm saying, but it's important just to follow. I will not repeat this every time. And the third part of nature, which is the third part of the second part, is itself divided in three. One, two, three. Okay. Now I will comment the first part of the second part of nature, which is itself the second part of the process. Physic of the universal individuality. I will not systematically comment. I have translated with my own limited cognitive ability and knowledge of English. And I've introduced so I have introduced songs, mythological references, scientists, YouTube channels, just to try to connect the dots because everything is interconnected eventually. So we had the first moment was mechanics is abstract physics, quantitative physics mathematically determined in modern in modern uh, consciousness namely astronomy and mechanics the movement of objects but in a purely quantitative view here it's more qualitative so it's more colorful although colors on a physical standpoint they are just electromagnetic electromagnetic waves which are quantitatively determined but here it's qualitative so it's more uh, sensuous more concrete and yeah so the universal individuality, what is it? It's the cosmos, but it can be reduced here to the solar system. Let us simplify. So there are the celestial bodies, the physical elements. So here it's astronomy, chemistry, and the meteorological process. And it begins here with uh, the three physical bodies. Here the, the vocabulary is not really important. It's just to see the structure the elements and the elemental, the, the process of the elements. So one, two, three parts. And I have added uh, European masculine archetypes and European feminine archetypes to make European mythology intelligible again and eventually to make European mythology great again. Yeah. Because uh, uh, here I will be a little bit arrogant against uh, against the Christians. <laughs> I'm a Christian, but uh, I'm also a pagan. That's complicated. And pagan, uh, it's, it's not pagan, it's European religion. And eventually the two, they coincide. <sighs> Those who make fun of the European religion by saying, oh, this is stupid, uh, Marvel movies. Uh, no. And uh, the, the European archetypes, they are either determinations of the mind, psychological determinations, they can be used to interpret the human psyche, 
and its great psychology, here I have to praise the ancient Greeks. They were not stupid, these Greeks. <laughs> and, and also determinations of nature, namely the astronomical, cos cosmic, and meteorological and ge geological and, and even biological processes. So that, that's why so somewhere there are uh, uh, archetypes from, uh, from a Nordic mythology, for instance. And, and songs. So there is uh, YouTubers, uh, uh, Nordic mythological archetypes, uh, modern pop music, uh, science and all of this is kind of uh, <laughs> mixed together uh, by German philosophy. It's not very rigorous, but uh, yeah. So, uh, the, the, the universal individuality, which is the cosmos, is determined first by light. Light, stars. From a physical standpoint, stars emit light. Uh, the, the, the reaction of, 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 of fusion, uh, and ther thermal reaction within the core of stars, it emits uh, waves, electromagnetic waves of, of light and photons. And uh, yeah, so light, stars, and the sun. And here we have rays of light. I will not leave. I will not. Uh, but I will. I will. I will let people uh, read. Uh, and here, to interconnect the various layers of being, we have songs about light, or the sun, or the stars, and there are many others in modern pop music. We have the symbol of, of light in Greek mythology, Nordic mythology, uh, and we have science, uh, optics, etc., uh, etc. Et so, yeah. It, it's very difficult to think about rigorously, etc. That's why it's quite confusing, but I'm trying to, to order the confusion. Order and chaos, these are Greek determinations uh, of, of archetypes. I mean, uh, yeah, the, the god of order and the, the chaotic aspect, Apollo and Dionysos, etc., etc. So here, uh, there are rays of light, particles, uh, the, the debate, uh, is it a wave, is it a particle, etc., uh, optics, etc., etc. Then, so that was the first one. Like then there is the, the, the bodies of opposition. And here we have qualitative distinction. Uh, here it's comp complex, but basically, uh, I just, these are just the categories. Uh, yeah. To think about the cosmos, one has to think about light, uh, about uh, the opposition of, 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 of the various bodies, like uh, uh, lunar and uh, cometary bodies, the satellites, etc., etc., and the, 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 so the solar system as a totality. So here it's kind of a mixture of, uh, of um, astronomy and uh, mythology, etc., uh, etc. Et and here we have uh, a Greek and Nordic archetype of moon goddess, uh, yeah, so th these are astronomical uh, determinations. And here we have the, the Earth, it could be Gaia or the planet, and it is an, an individual totality within a totality which is the solar system, within a totality which is the cosmos at large. Yeah. We just back, yeah. So here, what I've just seen in ordinary modern categorization of the sciences, these categories that we have seen, they are dealt with and, and, and explained and, uh, and uh, interpreted through astronomy, optics, and mag magnetism. Now, the second part that I will show, the elementor, this is mostly alchemy. So here it's kind of unintelligible for modern uh, students or scientists, and the third, this will be about geology, meteorology, climatology, seismology, and volcanology. We'll see uh, uh, Greek archetypes as well. So here, the second, so we had the first moment of the first division. Uh, the elements, 
yeah, the physical elements and the chemical simplicity. And here I explain the difference between chemistry and alchemy. The problem from a philosophical standpoint with chemistry is that it quantifies and simplifies everything, namely water becomes H2O, uh, air becomes uh, oxygen, yeah, oxygen in English. Uh, so the, the elements of classical uh, mytho poetic thinking, mythological and poetic and philosophical thinking, uh, the classical uh, is that some sort of a sick joke like the, the chemical they are mortal and uh, the alchemical they are immortal is that a sick joke uh, that God is, is making fun of me I don't know we'll see eventually but yeah I will keep my line of reasoning I understand that sometimes uh, that's why I, I have given up on trying to understand God because although <laughs> What I'm trying to do is to provide the formal structure of the, the, the intellectual grasping of, of the process of God, but even with a rigorous formal aspect, the speed at which God moves, in this sense, uh, if I said I am God, uh, maybe at some level, but actually I'm not, I'm an imposter, because God is way too smart for me. <laughs> and that's when here I'm in a mood to love, but... I think it's not really fair. I will add a song. It's an interactive process. It will please the Anglo-Saxon. <laughs> uh, what's, what's the reference? Yeah, I just check if the reference is correct. <laughs> okay, uh, it was partly, partly that. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so when I'm in a mood to be kind of joyful, but when I understand the process, I just say to myself, uh, it's way too complex intellectually. Uh, I try my best, but uh, that's why I try to share the formal structure, which is ordered. There's no doubt about this, but it moves so fast uh, that, uh, yeah. So, yeah, the, 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 the difference between alchemy and chemistry is that a chemical view of the elements, the material substances, is purely quantitative and abstract in the sense that it divides the object, like water is H2O, air is oxygen plus uh, uh, nitrogen, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, the earth is reduced to the chemical composition. Fire is reduced to uh, a chemical process of uh, uh, consumption, etc. And uh, it emits um, di uh, ca carbon dioxide, etc., uh, etc. Et the, the process, they are analyzed on a quantitative molecular level, which is true. But it's abstract because it leaves aside the, the it, it kind of it's, it's a dead way of thinking about nature. That's why most people are not interested in uh, physics and chemistry, etc. And they are kind of attracted the the, the, the esoteric uh, minded people. They are attracted by alchemy because it's full of symbolism and, and uh, yeah, it's it's more uh, qualitative. Doesn't mean better, but the, 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 the abstractions of the, the chemist is made more symbolic, more meaningful, etc. So the view of, here I would say the view of Hegel, because I do not fully understand, but the view of Hegel is uh, alchemical, uh, not chemical, but alchemy includes chemistry within itself. So yeah, all of these categories can be analyzed on a chemical standpoint, but there's also, namely, the, the, the nature is, is a living totality and the elements, they are what the ordinary people uh, call the, the spirits, the spirits of nature. But it's very vague, it's very undetermined. And what I'm trying to provide is a rigorous, formal, conceptual structure for understanding what people mean when they talk about uh, the earth spirits or whatever. So here we have uh, air, fire, water, earth, and of course, in uh, European mythology, but in other mythology as well, but here I will be a little bit arrogant, or simply uh, realistic, uh, European mythology is way more developed, well more, w way more wealthy and rich. Uh, here I think about George Clooney, uh, he's a, a very unique, uh, 
dark, uh, balanced, with a delicious aftertaste. You're talking about uh, about Hegel, right? Yeah. What else? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm losing it completely. Let us go back to seriousness again. Uh, yeah, here are example uh, about uh, songs, or here is a cartoon. We talk about the elements in modern pop culture. And it's universal because the guy here is an Asian kid. And there are black uh, singers. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, air, fire, water, earth, and air and fire are symbolically masculine elements. That's why men can be hot. Usually women are said to be hot, but uh, yeah. Uh, men can uh, set the heart of women on fire. For good, for good. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. And uh, water and earth, they are more uh, feminine in a way. <laughs> yeah. Now the third, uh, the third part. Uh, okay. We'll see that later. Uh, the elemental process. So here is the life of the earth, that which the ecologists, they call Gaia. But what do you mean when you call Gaia? It's just a word. Here are the determinations. Gaia is uh, the earth within a, 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 a systemic totality, the solar system, uh, etc. It, it, it's, it's a process of, of determination. So when people speak about Gaia in, in an abstract fashion, uh, the, 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 here I will be critical of the leftists, although they have the, the intuition of, of Gaia's uh, living totality, but they miss the moment of their Verstand. Here it's the moment kind of a negative, but actually which makes intelligibility, namely Gaia is not just a oh, symbol of uh, the fertility of the earth. It has to be understood physically. And here it's the, the balance between, here I will simplify, but that, that's part of the truth, between primitive primitive wisdom of the primitive people that the white leftists, oh, they are in awe in, in, in front of the, the wisdom of the Amazonian tribes, etc. And there are reasons to be because it's, it's good uh, mythology, but, and a good interpretation of the planets. I have the books. Uh, will I take the time to show the books? Yes. I will make a short, I will not even make a pause. I will talk because I have cleaned my room, uh, Mr. Peterson. So, yeah. Shamanism in Siberia. Uh, well, uh, the Inuits, uh, here the, the, I will just illustrate that the legend and the tales of the Inuits, in the mind of ordinary people, uh, the Inuits, they do not really live in nature because there are no trees and plants, etc., because they live in the snow. Uh, but actually, as I've showed, nature is precisely not just the trees and the forests, but the physical spatial temporal world. So, uh, yeah. But then, if by nature is meant organic nature, of course, the Inuits, uh, yeah. So here, Indian earth, spirituality, legends, prophecies of the Amerindians. The spiritual teaching, uh, Mother, uh, Mother Earth, or uh, yeah, the spiritual teaching of the Amazonian forest. <sighs> so that's the feminine principle. Then there is a uh, ayahuasca, uh, jaguar serpent, a shamanic education, whatever, and. Partly in the Australian Aborigines, I also have uh, African mythology, but it's more uh, I will use because I have to to counterbalance uh, Western arrogance. Uh, 
<laughs> I understand. So it's philosophy, African religion, quantum cosmology, and the symbolic of God. But usually the, the, the Gaia archetype is more associated with uh, with the, 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 the really the the, 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 the the Southern American natives. Uh, yeah, and I also have books about the Southern American or the the, 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 the original American uh, civilizations. But precisely the distinction between. Uh, the Maya, the Inca, and the Aztec, and so the three put together and uh, the more uh, natural, in ordinary sense, spirituality is precisely the distinction that in, in European history could be between Christianity and paganism, namely uh, from the point of view of the native shamans of the American continent, the Aztec, the Maya, and uh, the Incas, they were some sort of a, probably, the, the, some sort of a imperialist uh, oppressors before the arrival of Europeans in the chronological perspective, like in the mind of European traditionalist pagan, uh, the Christians and the Roman Empire, they were the oppressors of the the native Europeans who lived in harmony with nature. That's the story that pagans, modern pagans, tell themselves. Yeah. So, uh, and Schelling, uh, the German philosopher, his intellectual heir. Yeah. So, what is Gaia? The, the previous determination, and then this determination as well, namely meteorology, climate, the seasons the moons, etc., etc., and here uh, we have uh, geology, etc., in, 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 uh, in archety archetypes of European mythology, this would be Poseidon, Poseidon and Neptune, <sighs> Zeus and Jupiter for the thunderstorm, or the lightning, Thor for the lightning, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, that's why the, 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 the European archetypes, or, or any archetype, but they are most most uh, developed and, and interesting, one might say, at least they are not boring. Uh, as the people who watch the Marvel movies should know, uh, the, the, the European gods, uh, they can be recycled. Uh, there is the, the sculpture, mythology, poetry, Marvel movies, uh, na nature philosophy, uh, YouTube channels, uh, they, they, uh, they are not boring. Yeah. And here I will be a little bit arrogant. Not arrogant, I just be realistic. Uh, the European religion, uh, some people think it's a clown religion, uh, but in terms of intellectual aspect, creative, artistic aspect, ooh, it's on a different level than any other religion, even uh, Christian mythology, but they are not incompatible. Uh, but the, the European mythology uh, is on a different level in terms of aesthetics, creativity, etc., etc. Okay, so here was like the categories here, geology, etc. So that would be the determination of Gaia. So when people use the word Gaia, what do you mean? You should have a broad knowledge of all these topics and the previous ones, namely mechanics. Now, I show the view. Of, so here, I, I, I will not do this again. That's the first part of the second part of the philosophy of nature. Uh, yeah, so one, two, three, within one, nature would be two and Geist would be three. And now we have the second part of the second part of the second part. 
physics of the particular individuality. So the universal individuality would be the cosmos or the solar system or eventually Gaia. And now it's more particularized. And here we, we enter the realm of qualitative physics, that which we could call um, uh, chemistry. We had quantitative physics in the realm of mechanics. Now it's more qualitative. And here are some of the division. There are uh, specific weights, cohesion, sound, and uh, heat. Uh, yeah. Yeah, cohesion. And here, to illustrate, we find the determination, the, the, the chemical determinations of the structure of, of, of the substance, the physical substance, we find them in politics and, and psychology. Namely, what is coherent can be uh, an individual, can be coherent, a group can be coherent or incoherent, uh, a team, uh, etc. But it exists on a chemical level. It's the structure and the organization, not the organization, but the structure of the molecules, which give material objects their chemical properties in terms of uh, in terms of chemical properties precisely so here uh, it's chemistry here uh, chemistry from a qualitative standpoint and here sound emerges so here would be acoustics uh, do we see the categories? The categories of the modern sciences, they are here in blue. Uh, chemistry, acoustics, thermodynamics. Here are publications and journals. Uh, and uh, I think a YouTube channel, maybe, or a video, I don't know. Yeah. And here, acoustics. Yeah. He talks about the vibes produced by music. Uh, he talks about temperature. So music and, and, and dance is a way of getting in tune with the cosmic flow of vibrations. This is what a kind of the, the leftist, not the leftist, sorry, the, the feminist, not the feminist. Feminine, but usually leftist. Women on YouTube who make videos about uh, alchemy, etc. They talk about positive vibes, uh, get in tune with the vibrations, I send good vibes, etc., etc., which is psychological. It is felt as being a psychological determination. It's kind of pleasing when there are positive vibes are sent at you. <laughs> it balances my negativity, maybe. Uh, but it's also, on a physical level, vibes really are electromagnetic waves, and it's partly chemically determined, namely the different chemical substances uh, when they interact, they emit, they transmit, they project, it's not the proper word, vibrations, specific types of vibrations. Light is a vibration, a sound is a vibration. And now I will pick up one of my books. First, I will promote promote uh, Matthew. The reemergence of Schelling. That's footnotes to Plato and physics of the world soul. So Ma Matthew Siegel is uh, the intellectual heir of Whitehead and Schelling. Here I'm in a mood to be positive. I don't know if uh, Matthew will watch this. Uh, I am the negative. But uh, I am not just negative. Uh, not always. That's very strange <laughs> to, to be able to, I mean, I talk uh, to whatever, but if somehow someday you get my videos and you watch them, well, 
what kind of twisted experiment am I involved in? Yeah. Okay, so let us continue. And here, Harmony. Uh, I will pick up one of my books again. Thank God for Jordan Peterson. Uh, because uh, he's the one who, uh, whose pieces of advice uh, clean your room. Actually, it's, it's kind of dumb, but it's very useful. It's, so it's not dumb. Because now I can pick up my books. So here, just to illustrate the, the connection between music, sound, and the categories. <sighs> Chaos and harmony and the secret melody. Uh, so that's the unity of harmony, sound, vibration. And these are books, of course, about cosmology. Uh, yeah. And now I will quote a book by, uh, a book about cosmotheism. Yeah, cosmotheism about cosmic consciousness and uh, in tune with uh, D.H. Lawrence. I quote, We and the cosmos are one. The cosmos is a vast living body of which we are still parts. The sun is a great heart whose tremors run through uh, whose tremors run through our smallest veins. The moon is a great gleaming nerve center from which we quiver forever. Now all this is literally true as men knew in the great past and as they will know again. Hundreds of other cosmotheist expressions by prominent men during just the last few decades can be found. Our people down through the ages have been groping for the cosmotheist truth. And today, more than ever, they are finding it. So in a perspective of radical right-wing white people, the truth of the white race is precisely to transcend itself cosmically and, and to to discover or rediscover the unity of man and, and cosmic consciousness and uh, yeah but it's one uh, one aspect one thing to, to, to say oh we are one with the cosmos and then the serious uh, <laughs> Yes, my German self. Uh, it's 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 good to say that it is so, and the cosmotheist doctrine, from an intellectual standpoint, is is serious. But the the usually the leftists who say, "Oh, we are one with the cosmos," yeah, but then you have to provide intellectual work to to actually uh, explain and and, and prove and, and whatever, and that's uh, more difficult. That's maybe the work of the negative. I don't know. warm for heat and here we have the categories i will not comment but if people want to see illustrations that's why one of my ideas i don't know if it's my idea but basically if people could find themselves in a position where competent people could give them lectures on uh, thermodynamics uh, acoustics chemistry, etc., etc., astronomy, while using uh, songs mostly produced by Europeans. <laughs> That's the truth, not only. Uh, I, I, will be, I will be evil, but uh, even the non-Europeans, 
anthropologically. They are still uh, partly European. It can be seen. Uh, they are partly. They, they, are, they have European genes. Not only, of course, uh, anyone, any people can uh, can do great music, but uh, quantitatively, uh, most of the great music. Uh, that's my way of. Uh, So yeah, if uh, competent people could give lectures by using illustration, there are many more. I just it's just just what I've uh, encountered, but there are many others. Okay, so now, and it's connected. It's not just random. Namely, that the people when they sing and when they vibe, they, 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 we we uh, whatever uh, Eminem says, uh, sing for the moment uh, when uh, we we feel the vibe or whatever. Uh, yeah, uh, that's the, the cosmos uh, making them uh, swing and, and vibe and move and yeah. <sighs> Physics of the total individuality in itself, life. So here we have pan psychism, and uh, here are the determination, magnetism, electricity, the chemical process in the modern branch of the sciences. Uh, here's a f famous alchemist, and there are there are women I have uh, understood this empirically who spontaneously and usually women on a quantitative verhältnis, namely quantitative proportion, they are more in tune with what is nature as of now. What I have showed the categories of what nature is, they are more in connection with Gaia or the cosmos from from the perspective of intuition and feeling, whereas men, they are more in the intellect. That's a traditionalist distinction. But women, it is true that empirical women, and here it's really empirical and me, not the feminine principle, but really existing women, they have a tendency to be more in tune with nature. Men, they are more in the pure intellect. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> but eventually they have to coincide uh, through a, a cognitive process. So here are the determinations, the figure, so magnetism, etc., etc. And here, it, it's really simple. But the, the 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 determinations of chemistry and electromagnetism, because the totality is in relation to itself and interconnected, they are to be found within psychology and and politics eventually opposition uh, attraction repulsion we find this already in logic but also in interpersonal uh, relationship even within the mind of, a, of the same individual in case of bipolar disorder or psychiatric problems but also within societies and uh, m to be m magnetically attracted in a way by another person usually a person of the opposite sex uh, is uh, partly chemically determined. There's a, a band, my, my Chemical Romance, yeah, and here uh, a principle of, of magnetism expressed ordinarily. Uh, the poles who have the same name, they are foes, and those who have a different name, they are friends. That's the repulsion of sameness and attractions towards otherness. If I really have to illustrate, this is simply the principle of heterosexuality. Men are attracted by their opposites. <sighs> Women, usually. But then there is an attempt to transcend the dualism, uh, which uh, gives uh, LGBT people, which is uh, an attempt to solve the division within the realm of anthropology, but the division is metaphysical. In case it's not clear, LGBTQ people, it's Plato's symposium uh, gone insane. I'm not saying that they are insane on an individual level, but basically there are transgender people because it's an attempt 
to reunite with the, the, the other principle in the realm of anthropology. But it shouldn't be done in the realm of anthropology. I mean, it's metaphysical. That inverted Platonism. <sighs> but inverted Platonism is still Platonism. Yes, when European mythology, European philosophy, uh, white insanity. Uh, no, I'm not talking about uh, just the insane aspect of the white psyche. They kind of coincide. And <laughs> yeah. Homogeneity that that's found in in, in in politics as well. Density, refraction, etc., etc. So it's really qualitative physics. And that's why. Uh, people are not usually interested in the chemical composition of perfume or uh, uh, food or uh, whatever. They, they would not be interested if they, these were chemically analyzed. Although this would be rigorous and serious from a scientific standpoint, but they want usually the, 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 the qualitative aspect, not in a sense of good, but in a sense of uh, immediacy and not the mediation of the pure intellect. Although they, they are kind of identical uh, in a way. Tension, uh, opposition, etc., etc. Here, honestly, if people cannot, if they have the time and if they don't have the interest to study electricity while listening to this song, So we find the determination of, of uh, physics in the realm of psychology and sociology. Yeah. I just showed a view of the totality, how to think. So the, the modern physicists, their science should be categorized within uh, this moment of the process. So in order to understand chemistry, one first has to understand, well, logic, at least broadly, and then the determination of mechanics, uh, astronomical physics, and, and eventually chemistry. And this is also how it is structured chronologically. This is how life emerges uh, in, in the process of nature from, a, from a, a philosophical standpoint, in a way. And then the story is the story of Darwin uh, in, the, in a chronological perspective, but from a logical perspective, life is the self-moving, self-relating, organic whole which contains within itself all the previous determinations. But in a, in a qualitatively different way, namely it is, uh, we'll see what life is from a philosophical standpoint, but yeah. So now the third moment of nature, Organic, organic physique, the third part, which is divided in geological nature, vegeta vegetabilisation nature, and uh, the, the animal organism. So here are, we'll see the categories. But the geological nature, so we had already seen aspects of Gaia, but now it's more determined, more rigorous. Uh, here's the cosmos that I've talked about. 
and uh, yeah so here the earth is uh, a living totality and here is the process of uh, the, the, the the formation the solar system etc etc so this is how rigorously one ought to think about uh, Gaia uh, as they call this so the earth is one but it has multiplicity within itself namely the continents the oceans the seas the various topographical uh, moments etc etc and here it's more concrete it more makes sense it makes more sense namely that uh, this determination sea and land or uh, deposits of, of gold or oil or gas or rare metals or whatever they they bring forth the historical process and they sustain the historical process yeah and here uh, are modern categories of the sciences which can translate what we've just seen yeah I will just make a brief pause. Okay, I just made a <clears throat> short uh, break. And um, it's 5.46 uh, uh, p.m. 28th of September. I will talk for uh, until uh, 6 p.m., so for a few minutes. Because uh, I will just say what I have on my mind, and then I will keep uh, commenting. So I will just make a short pause. Okay, so uh, just in the continuity with a discrete moment. Uh, I, I uh, have just been talking for uh, 15 minutes after a pause. Now I will keep commenting rigorously. I mean, as a, not, not very rigorous, but uh, as a, the, the, proper, the proper balance between um, accessibility and the smallest amount of comments which might enable understand the full picture so we are in the realm of nature <coughs> uh, we have we had just seen uh, the geological nature and now the vegetabilition nature <sighs> here it's how plants develop with the categories of plants how to think about <coughs> a plant and here it's connected with I will pick up a book <clears throat> that I haven't I haven't read like most of the books that I buy <laughs> What the pagans? No, I call this the European religion because pagan is kind of derogatory. Whereas European religion, it sounds better. I haven't read the book, but I know that it's a good book. Uh, that's one of the problems that I have. I can identify good books without even reading them, which is kind of frustrating because I see good books everywhere, <laughs> but I can't read them. I can deal with that. So yeah, the world tree, uh, Yggdrasil, in, in pagan religions, in the, the European religion, it's simply, I mean, it's, no, it's not simply, it's simply a, a developing totality. It's a symbol to represent the totality unfolding and developing itself. Because here, I just come on briefly, a plant is an individual, it begins as a bud, develops its branches, it transforms, it, there's a process of configuration, I mean, of structure, uh, individuation, the cells, the fibers, uh, the plant is in relation to itself, 
it has roots, leaves, vessels for the circulation of the blood. It's not blood for the plants, but the, the I don't know how you call this in, the, in English. The the the, the 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 liquid. I don't know how to call this in English. Preservation, growth, strengthening or toughening of the 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 the, the, the bark, the wood, and then the blossom. Uh, enabled by light, which uh, brings about the process. <sighs> the, the flower here, it's it's kind of poetic, but here it's really good. Uh, where's Matthew? <laughs> Where are the poets? Uh, when here, I, I, I'm in a mood because uh, I'm in a mood to praise God and, and creation. There's a poetic aspect to nature, uh, and there are people who are naturally without making a plan, what naturally endowed to perceive the, the beauty sometimes. And those who need an intellectual process and those typically the Anglo-Saxon who completely miss the point. <laughs> no, but seriously, <sighs> shelling and, and the, the, here, the way, the way I understand this, this is the European soul. It's not restricted to European, but quantitatively, mostly Europeans have this connection with the cosmos and the idea that Nature is kind of a, I, I may not always be in a mood to praise this, but a work of art uh, by, by a creator and that it's, it's it, the idea that the light of the sun, which is true on a, on a, on a, on a physical and, and biological level, that the light of the sun enables the growth of the plants and the blossom of the flowers. It's poetic and there are probably great poets uh, in English literature and as well as, as French and literatures of most European countries who have expressed this, the romantic poets. And, and to be able not just to, to read good poetry, but to, to participate in the life of the cosmic totality, that's a great experience, I guess. And here, the European women, because they are all European, let's be honest. On YouTube, these women, they are all European, not all of them, but mostly they have a special connection with nature. Their soul is in unity with nature. That's why the Europeans, they, they are kind of special. They are not the only ones, potentially all humans, probably, but especially the primitive tribe of Southern Amazonia and the Australian Aborigines and the Africans and uh, the, the, the native North American uh, Indians, etc. But in, in Europe, there is this, this it's, it's special in a way. So here we find the determinations of the logical ID, the determinations of an organism, uh, the determination of 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 of, 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 of an animal already, but in in the realm of of, of bo botanics, and uh, yeah. The idea that the flowers, they are the symbol of light, which is true on a physical level, and that men, when they are in love, they buy flowers to the girl that or the, the woman that they, they chase, or that they, they seduce, or that they want to seduce. Isn't that poetic? If we leave aside the, the negative aspect of, of romanticism, isn't that poetic? But here is my, my uh, German self. Maybe that's the flower brought about by the light, who knows? <laughs> no, I don't know. No, but seriously, here I'm really serious. Uh, the poet here. I'm really, I'm really Hegelian, <laughs> like Hegel. The poetic aspect, the romantic aspect. Okay, that's nice and all that. I mean, it can be, uh, yeah, but it's 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 great. But there has to be rigor and systematicity. And here, the the romantic aspect and the enlightenment aspect, namely poetic imagination, like Schelling and dry, boring. Anglo-Saxon ratiocination, ratiocination, namely the dead and dry uh, Verstandish view, they have to be kind of recon reconciled. And here it's Hegel at its best from an intellectual standpoint. Uh, the, the unity of both, namely it's good to have a poetic view, but it has to be incorporated within a systematic scientific totality. 
In this sense, I am a spontaneously a totalitarian for, for the good aspect. <laughs> yeah. So here we have the animal or zoological nature. Or, or, or yeah, nature, an organic nature. And the subject which arise in the animal is in this Zion the subjective Allgemeinheit, namely the subject is the universality which can reflect upon itself. Yeah. And here, the, well, that's one of the complex determination of the language of Hegel, namely the subject, not the animal subject, but the human subject, is the singular for which the universal can, can be made present, hat Dasein, I wouldn't say exist, but has Dasein, and, and the, the, the universal can reflect upon itself through the mediation of the singular. And here I will make a connection with what I said during my talk moment just a few minutes ago. Why would such an amazing intelligence choose a random human, when I say, to reflect upon itself, knowing that on an empirical level I have limitations of all sorts? That's where I feel kind of like an embarrassment, but uh, I can still improve, but yeah. So the determinations of the animal, self-movement, the voice, that's why animals have souls. It's, not, it's one thing to say, oh, animals have souls, uh, met metampsychosis, uh, uh, whatever, reincarnation of animals or whatever. Here, that's where I put Pythagoras and Indian philosophy. But then one has to understand uh, not just to assert, but to, to prove and to, 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 to prove that one understands why. It's not enough here, it's just the formal structure, but... Uh, here I will make a joke. That's why the Germans of the past century, they were not that bad, at least <laughs> in the realm of uh, ecology, because uh, they, they cared about, uh, inspired by Indian tradition, they cared about the well-being of animals. Here are the modern equivalents or the, the modern branches of the sciences which deal with these topics. And here I haven't had the time, I just took a few dozens of seconds or a couple of minutes just to list a, a biological uh, standardization, whatever, congress or uh, I don't know how you call this. And of course, Mr. Dawkins. But eventually, but at this, po at this moment, the, the video is almost three hours long. If people haven't understood, they will not understand by hearing my explanation now. So I will not explain, but basically all the great biologists could be listed, etc., etc., etc. So this was the, the introduction. Now we have the subdivision of the third part, uh, animal organism, and I will just show the categories because I will not comment much, it's just to show the... Because one of the purposes is that eventually someone will, will take my, my ID and, and will, will keep improving. And if they don't, I will keep doing it myself. That's what I do all day. Uh, almost. And I will, honestly, on an empirical level, I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I say this. As long as no one else get interested in the systematic view, I will keep improving the subdivision, the branches, by introducing statistics and further division, and tell, until someone eventually realizes that's the way of attaining knowledge. And I'm not saying that it's always good, but basically people eventually they will be interested uh, because I talk about everything, but not randomly, not in the videos like these, which are not formally structured in terms of what I say. I have not notes and I, I am improvising what I say, but they are... Uh, th th they are, they are improvised in terms of expression, but not in the, in the rigor. Namely, the, the, this is my document, inspired by the works of Hegel, but this is my formal presentation. So I follow the, the rigorous line of thinking. But in this sense, it is ordered. It's not improvised completely. So yeah. Uh, so the determination of the figure and, and of, of, of life uh, as uh, animal life, this is sensibility, irritability, reproduction, Sigh. <sighs>
the various systems, nervous system, blood system, digestive system, etc., etc. And here, I, did, I say this to myself because it's not always clear, but basically in order to understand a human being, his blood pressure, his nervous tension, his digestive problems, maybe here that's where Nietzsche comes into play, uh, eating whatever he says, uh, uh, I, I eat uh, potatoes because uh, whatever, the German mind <laughs> is a product of uh, eating potatoes. I don't. Uh, not too much or not at all, but yeah, here's where Nietzsche comes into play to bring maybe Hegel back to earth to explain that sometimes there are connections between uh, very simple uh, biological determinations and physiological, and here I can testify, when I do not sleep enough, I become really insane and, and I become kind of negative, so that's not good. That's why on a very basic uh, common sense, just to sleep at least six or seven hours per night can do a whole lot of good just because the, the, the brain will be chemically balanced for the rest of the day. There are circumstances in which one has to be deprived of sleep for, uh, yeah, and okay, but it's not, uh, it's not really good because it, 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 it yeah, I understand myself. Namely, uh, sleeping uh, is a universal uh, human right. Only in exceptional cases. Uh, yeah. But precisely, I decide, I've decided that for as long as I deem this uh, the correct thing to do, I will sleep normally because I have tried not to. And uh, no, then I lose it completely and uh, that's not good. So, yeah. So the various systems, the bone system, etc., etc. So here, for instance, all the progress of neurobiology they can be incorporated here, but the neurobiologist, this is very, the, the idea here, but then I realized after three hours of video, I should have made this clear, clear uh, earlier. That's why my videos keep improving because I keep understanding better. But basically all the neurobiologists, their problem is that they, they study, the, they spend their life studying the, the brain, but they do not see the full picture because they do not have the time, uh, the, fin the financing or whatever. But in order to understand how the human brain functions, one has to understand all the determination in their broad outline, the determination of nature, and eventually the effect of the human brain upon the, the individual psyche and the collective psyche, etc., etc. And there are Hegelian leftists, like Mrs. Malabu, recommended by Zizek, who understands uh, partly the brain in a Hegelian sense. <sighs> yeah. I do not comment. But here, just uh, blood before it, ignite the blood. It is common, empirical, uh, yeah, satisfaction uh, is here. It's common, uh, it's common uh, empirical experience that there are peoples, not people, but peoples, and people within peoples who are a different uh, blood pressure and they have the tendency to get a little bit heated up more easily than others. Uh, it's partly anthropologically determined. Then there is the, the racist caricature which has to be avoided but the opposite, namely to pretend that there are, there are no influences on the behavior due to uh, the ign ignition of blood is kind of uh, delusional. Yeah. Here I will say what I think. The head would be platonic love. The abdomen would be sexual desire. And the breast would be romantic tender love. That's one way. Maybe it's delusional, but that's one way I interpret this. Namely, the love of the libido, when I say sexual desire, romantic, uh, tender love, and platonic love. The best, of course, is romantic, tender love.
And here I will talk one of the problems that I have is that by growing up, uh, of course, already uh, on, a, on a sociobiological level, when the hormones develop uh, in teenage youth, uh, people get interested in sex. Yeah, but uh, yeah, how to express this? Basically, I've understood this. I never thought. Here, I will use uh, pop music. <laughs> that is this is for Stella. The problem, it's my personal problem, but maybe it's universal, at least for Europeans, I don't know, but I believe that we can only fall in love once with, 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 with another, another girl uh, when we are teenagers and eventually we can only fall in love once and then it kind of, when it's teenage years, it's, it's romantic, it's beautiful, it's kind, tenderness, uh, the dreams about romantic, uh, uh, everlasting story, etc. And then when we grow older, I've realized this. We, we cannot be romantically in love because precisely what the European story says that it's only when you are a teenager that you can have a romance. Then when you grow older, you can still love women from the perspective of men and you can probably still have an interesting and, and passionate love story. Thank God there are people who experience love, uh, romantic love in adulthood uh, all over the world and I'm happy for them. But the kind of romanticism of, of an adult is different than from the romanticism of a teenager because it's a little bit more uh, a little bit more dark and twisted sometimes it can be more passionate as well and, and there's the, the more erotic uh, it's embarrassing to talk about but that's that's true namely when we are young we are attracted by the other of the other sex uh, without thinking about or at least without consciously thinking about the, the, the the sexual aspect, it's kind of irrelevant. It's just the tenderness of, oh, there is another, and it's wonderful, etc. When we grow older, uh, yeah, there's the, the erotic aspect. It's kind of, I'm still maybe a teenager in my mind and I still dream about it. Yeah, but that's one of the problems. Here I will be, I will be honest. <laughs> there are some women who are attractive and, and they... Here I will use Greek mythology. That's not my fault. Blame the Greeks. <laughs> no, seriously. I will be honest because... Uh, yeah, but... And it's not on a physical plane. It's metaphysical arousal basically and i i kind of uh, it's embarrassing to confess but actually it, otherwise the human experience can it cannot be properly understood i mean if eroticism is left completely out of the equation the human condition when i say it becomes partly boring <laughs> that's a joke no but it becomes unintelligible so for the sake of science i must confess that uh that's these kind of songs, they, they, they kind of, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, here are the senses. The romantic, not in a literary, um, rigorously classified sense, but romantic in a sense of a poetic, uh, artistic, creative expression. The, the French romantic poet, uh, the spleen, in English, the word spleen is used in, in French literary history to express the, the mood of 
uh, of some uh, French poets in the 19th century mostly, maybe early 20th century. So that, that's the idea that poetic inspiration is partly biologically determined. Here's where Nietzsche uh, would probably <coughs> partly agree. The, the women in modern pop culture, uh, you're a gift and a poison, a blessing in, and, and a curse, uh, you're the cure, you're the pain, uh, they all sing the same song. Um, Katy Perry, um, Ellie Goulding, uh, and, and others. Here, <laughs> here it's, it's the unity of, of European mythology in modern pop culture. Basically, there is here. I do not understand because empirically I'm not a woman. But women, they have some sort of this this European women mostly they, they have this this fascination, this attraction for spiritual powers, what we call the witches. Well, poison ivy, for instance, is an example of, of a witch, not strictly speaking, but it's a, a spiritually powerful woman in modern pop culture. The version by Emma, Emma uh, Th Th Thurman, Emma Thurman. Yeah, well, that's not the most inspired Batman movie one has ever seen, but <laughs> the Batman franchise, even when it's bad, it's still good. Very few franchises can say this, but Batman is one of them. So here it's kind of comical. <laughs> I mean, it's not always funny, but uh, it's an illustration. I mean, here I, here I must confess that I do not understand. Uh, but there is an aspect in the female psyche. Women, they, they, they want to, to feel empowered. And here I have to be honest, because it's a, a, a very profound religious question. I understand the Muslims... Uh, of course, on the perspective of Sharia law. Because women, they can be quite annoying. But I also understand the European perspective. And namely, I, I think it's some sort of a moral duty. And maybe I will fail to live to my standards. I don't know, but probably because it's really difficult. But the idea that to be in relation with free-spirited women, namely women who are strong and independent, it's kind of exciting, uh, not on a sexual level, but on, a, on, a, on an intellectual level. Let me to be confronted by, by women who are confident and strong and, and, and only on an anthropological level, mo not only, but mostly European women. Here, here I will be critical. Well, really the, the leftist, feminist, uh, whatever. It's kind of nonsense. They criticize the West for oppressing women, which is partly true, but this is the civilization which has offered empirically, historically, the most freedom, whatever content is given to freedom, to women. So to blame Western civilization for oppressing women, uh, here all, all civilizations have to be blamed. And if one civilization does not deserve the blame on this topic, it's Western civilization. And the, the people who have a culture, they know this. And having uh, independent, as independent as it can get from the perspective of a woman, but strong and, and, and free-spirited women, it can be a problem because are you strong enough to deal with, uh, with your women? <laughs> but the idea that to promote real female empowerment, not by a uh, nonsense, a leftist, feminist ideology, whatever, real female empowerment... It can be dangerous. 
<laughs> but that's some sort of a moral challenge for a man to say, okay, uh, let us make uh, women uh, great again. And it's partly, I was talking about poison. Uh, where is the poison? <laughs> Uh, in every woman, maybe, I don't know. No, but it's partly intoxicating in a good sense, like... A <sighs> yeah. Whatever. Okay. So, this is nature. I see the no. I, I show the, the full picture. So we have logic, the mind of God. I've spent probably two two no two what one hour and forty minutes. I don't. There was one hour of introduction, and then one and a half hour. So I've spent more than one and a half hour talking broadly about nature, not very rigorously, but just to to show that for any scientist, any student, any ecologist, any pagan, any uh, tarot reader, whatever, any uh, astrologer, astrologist, any, any person who is interested in the cosmos, the way of experiencing the cosmos fully is to have at least the, the broad knowledge, not in the full detail, but the, 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 at least the vision of the broad structure to know what are you talking about when you talk about nature, what is nature in the fundamental determinations, and, and honestly, a person with an IQ of, let us say, above 85, above 80 maybe, if it, he or she has the time to be explained clearly, to see the interconnectedness, not what I have done, it's not very rigorous, but if others who are competent, they can explain to cognitively limited people, uh, the, 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 the interconnectedness by using music. If no one else does this, I will do it myself. Using music, images from mythology, the, the development of the modern sciences, etc., etc. Yeah, just to, to have a, a cosmic experience, maybe. Maybe that's the best I can offer, I don't know, given the circumstances. So, yeah. So we are back. Oh, here we, we enter the realm of subjective of Geist, namely, I will show the full picture, the transition from nature to Geist, and Geist incorporates uh, all these aspects. Here in pink, we have subjective of Geist, here, 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 and in the middle, in blue, there is objective or Geist, in yellow, absolute or Geist, and why is there green here? It's simply, I will show, because green here is the color of nature, but here we're talking about energy, which is a material uh, substances, for lack of a better qualification. And here it's the geographic, the, the, the geographical uh, determination of a society. So it belongs to nature, but geography here it's important. It's of course it's naturally determined. So geography, in a way, is geology but precisely it's not because it's how humans shape the earth so it's it's a mixture of objective or geist borders economic uh shaping of, of the land etc so geography is not just natural it's also spiritual it's a mixture of the two it is how the mind and the spirit shapes and structures the earth and the topography that's why Ge geography is here, and here are energy resources, etc., etc. I will take a short uh, break, really just a couple of minutes to drink water, and then I will keep uh, commenting. Okay, I continue. Uh, so, subjective or geist. Here, it's really interesting. <laughs> Uh, here I'm frustrated because I know, I know that my videos, the kind of, these videos like this, they are not very good in a sense that it's not very structured, etc., etc. But they are still good nonetheless because if people could take the time to watch them, they would find enlightenment for good. And I'm partly frustrated, but my plan is as long as I can publish video, I will alternate between systematic, rigorous commentary of 
my own documents and more improvised videos which are shorter but as of now I will continue as long as I have commented uh, the full view so here because here I have really simple things to say which might enlighten people who empirically they are smarter than me namely when people talk about the word soul this is what Spinoza called the substance this is what the philosophy of Schelling talks about and this is, these are simply the determination to think, what is the world soul? Here's a good book, right, that I haven't had the opportunity to read. Maybe I will never read the book, but uh, yeah. But I know it's good. <laughs> Maybe I'm the, the most lazy, I would say a god, let us say, the most lazy god ever, because my job consists in saying, this book, haven't read it, but I know it's good. This book, I haven't read it, but I know it's good. This book, I haven't read it, but Stella recommended it to me. I know it's good. Basically, that's the truth. Except the works of Hegel, I haven't read any book thoroughly. I mean, I've skipped through and skimmed through it, etc., and partly read passages, but except the works of Hegel, I, I haven't almost read any book thoroughly. But I know they are good nonetheless because now I have experience, I can skim or skip through the book for a few minutes. I, I know if it's a good book or not. So yeah, that's why also I'm taking risk because I'm promoting books that I haven't read. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I'm partly lazy and partly irresponsible maybe, but also I take risks in a way. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in order to qualify what the world soul is in free division, so the, the natural soul, there is natural, there are natural qualities, natural changes, and sensation. So these are the three distinctions. And here it's how it is to be qualified. The universal planetary life. This is what the leftists talk about, but they talk about this without any determinacy. They say, oh Gaia, the life of the planet. But what are you talking about? It's just an abstraction. It has to be made concrete. So here is what the, the, the universal planetary life contains, the climates. Here it's borrowed from the CIA. The changes of the seasons, the times of the day, the mood, the cosmic, sideral, telluric life of humans, animal sympathy, uh, for forecasting or for uh, pre previsions or uh, forecasting. And these kind of women, they are all European and they are, all have a connection to the cosmos and their interest is partly with these kind of determinations. And in this sense, women are very different from men on an empirical level and, and empirical women can know and understand aspects of the cosmos that empirical men cannot. That's female empowerment. <laughs> And it's true. Uh, eventually, it's true. And here, it's kind of the negative aspect of, of, of men is that modern men, modern here means uh, since the, the end of the Middle Ages, basically, uh, they really have lost. Here, I, I, will, I will say what I think uh, to, to, to illustrate. It's not really serious in the sense that, but usually, subjective ergeist is more kind of more feminine because it is the realm of the soul. Whereas objective or geist is more masculine because it is the realm of the mind in a way. That's why on a quantitative level, there are many more women who are interested in animal sympathy than in legislation, for instance. But of course, there are men. It's also partly masculine, as we will see here. There are only men, but the, the, the subjective... In this sense, this is why the romantics in the history of European literature are considered to be more feminine because they let their emotion, their inner, uh, their inner um, subjectivity express itself through lyricism. Etc. That's the kind of the, the feminine aspect of romanticism. Although romanticism is a masculine movement, like most European movements, yeah, but it's more feminine because it lets emotions express themselves. Well, the Enlightenment. It's more dry and more boring, but yeah, yeah. Uh, but
But here, feminine and masculine are not very rigorous. It's just to express uh, modes or uh, determinations of the soul. So here it's important. We have the universal planetary life of the nature spirits. The, so in order to understand the energies or the nature spirits or whatever, all the previous determination, not only of subjective or guides, but all the determination of nature have to be understood. And the primitive people, they understand this intuitively because they live in direct connection, empirically, one might say, with their environment. Whereas the divide of modern man is that he has created an artificial environment, one might say. This is what living in harmony with nature means. And those who have been the most uprooted historically are the Europeans, and that's why they are striving to, to seek uh, to the reunion with with the, the world soul and with their own uh, nature determinacy. And the difference in consciousness is that some women are unconsciously European, namely they have no consciousness of, of race, and others are more. And then there are, I will illustrate with modern example, the women in the alt-right, they have a consciousness of race, but no consciousness of their cosmic... Uh, uh, soul-like self. Here it's really pidgin English, pidgin philosophy maybe, but I understand myself. Uh, they, they have no cosmic consciousness, basically. They just have the consciousness of race as, a, as, as the determination that we will see. Uh, here I borrowed this from uh, the classification of a book uh, by a summary inspired by Rushton, but basically this is how to think about race, the various races. Here are subdivisions, uh, quantitative determination. This is some of the aspects through which the various human races differ. Demographics. I have borrowed this from the CIA. I have just added this category. In order to understand a country or to understand the world, or the human world, the, 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 the anthropological aspect has to be taken into account. The demographic. Uh, and it has to be actualized. As of now, I am working on an Excel uh, document, but eventually, I don't know what's going to happen, but maybe uh, it will self-actualize. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> local spirits. Here is, uh, in Europe, there are various local spirits, the various nations. Each nation has developed, historically, its own spirit. And within each nation, each region has its own spirit as well. Uh, south, southwest England and, and northern England and eastern England, etc., are different. Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and England, they are partly different anthropologically, but also spiritually, or not spiritually, but in terms of spirit. Uh, France, historically, is a country in which differences of, of local geister, of local spirits, are pro prevalent and very important. The US, it's much shorter historically, but I know that uh, the spirit of, of Texas, the spirit of Florida, the spirit of California, uh, the spirit of Oregon or Michigan or uh, Virginia or uh, the, the, the East Coast, the West Coast, etc., it, it, it works and it is partly a product of uh, racial differences, but also of these determinations. And I know enough about rap music to say that even uh, among Afro-Americans, there are the West Coast spirit and the East Coast spirit. So Africans uh, on, a, on a Northern American continent, which does not belong to them, not in terms of moral legitimacy, but in terms of climate, etc., like it does not really belong to Europeans, although it partly does more because of the Northern Hemisphere, but Africans on a strictly uh, climatic, they do not belong it doesn't mean that they cannot adapt precisely because objective of guys, the purpose is to transcend the divisions of nature. But in a sense, like, like Europeans do not belong to uh, Southern Africa. I'm not talking about moral legitimacy. I'm talking about climatic adaptation. Like they do not belong to Texas or to Australia in this sense. They are not made in the Darwinian perspective to be, to evolve in this environment. But they can precisely because man is just, is not just a natural being, but he transcends nature through objective or guys. But what I mean is among Afro-Americans in the realm of culture, which is influenced by the climate of the continent and the, 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 the determinations of race, there is the, the East Coast and, and West Coast, also the Northern and Southern, etc., etc. So this is what is meant by uh, 
by a local geister. There, there are various particular local spirits within the same country, independently of racial differences. Namely, like I said, uh, northern and southern white Americans are different, eastern and western as well. And east, west, north, south depends partly on these determinations. The determination of the individual soul, temper, talent, character, physiognomy, disposition. So uh, what people spontaneously love in their love, loved one, their, 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 their wife or their girlfriend or their boyfriend uh, from a woman's perspective is the temper, the talent, the character, the disposition, what, what they find annoying. <laughs> this is also that, but It's kind of a, what do you call this in English? Uh, cheesy or a little bit, uh, how do you call this? Cr cringe, not in a negative sense, but kind of weird cr cringe a little bit. Like really when, when you are attracted by a person that you've spent time with, in my case, it's <laughs> through internet uh, videos. At some moment you fall in love with, we will see that later, kind of fall in love with the, the the, the, the temper and we will see uh, more in detail uh, and I, I know I will show this with uh, where is it I, I, here I skip uh, for the sake of love <laughs> the, 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 the soul the voice the, the way uh, the person laughs or uh, uh, yeah the, the, these are other aspects of the soul and when one is in love with a person one comes to love the temper, the talent, the character, the physiognomy, and the voice, the, 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 the laughter, etc, etc. Yeah, that's what the poets try to express. In modern categories, uh, what I have talked about, uh, it comes from bottom up top. Astrology, sociobiology, this is what Subjective Ergeist talks about in modern language. And there is a revival of paganism because on the internet people share the experience of telepathy, divination, psychic, star, witchcraft, etc. etc. And they really have powers, these people. They are really spiritually inspired. But if they want to understand themselves, they have to understand the full picture. Yeah. Then the ages of life, here a little bit of sociology, the mindset, the worldview of people evolves through time, a child, a teenager, a man, and an old person. Here it's borrowed from the CIA in order to understand a society. One has to take into account the age structure, the population pyramid, etc. But the modern, here it's the, the degenerate aspect of modernity from a Western perspective. When they see these categories, they think economic advantage the young they can be exploited <laughs> we can uh, sell them a, f a fraudulent education that they are in, in debt and we can exploit them the population pyramid how are we gonna manage uh, the retirement pension Pfft, i don't blame them because yeah because of american common sense but eventually the evolution of, of, of age is to be taken on a, on a cosmic and, 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 and psychological perspective, namely uh, uh, to grow old is not simply uh, to become a welfare dependent uh, which have to bring in migrants to work and pay for the retirement pension, it's simply to have a different perspective on life. And uh, yeah. Eventually, maybe at some point, old people will watch my videos and when, in, when they understand what we are, they will find this very weird, I guess, but maybe they will be able to reflect back upon their life, uh, hopefully with a, a lighted heart, I don't know. Yeah. So here, the relationship of the sexes, categories borrowed from the CIA, so for each society, the data have to be included. <sighs> Women. They are more in the realm of sensation, ethical life, and love. 
Men, they are more in the realm of universal goals, the state, science and art. It's empirically true. Uh, namely, women, they are more interested about family life, etc., etc., whereas men, they want to expand towards the universal, particular universal. Uh, their Verstand is simply the determining of objective reality through the use of the categories. The soul is immediate consciousness, unity with the substance, maybe, unthinking unity, whereas their Verstand is categorization, organization, ordering. Yeah. Then, sensation. Here, there are many women, mostly European, on, on YouTube or on the internet who make. Uh, yeah. Who make um, ISMR content. This is. It will be classified here. It's kind of the soul through the mediation of, of sounds and, and vibrations that we saw earlier. And uh, yeah. And usually they are somehow in connection. Uh, here it's uh, yeah in connection with nature. They, they, there's a reason why these are most of the time women, most of the time European women. But uh, ISMR is typically a feminine. I mean, it can only be for men as well, but it's typically feminine. So here are determination of the soul, uh, the senses of ideality, the senses of reality, etc., etc. Here classical. Uh, classical uh, psychology, namely uh, anger, courage, they are felt within different parts of the, the, the body. When uh, the blood boils, it's uh, courage or anger or whatever. Here are the determination of the soul. Of course, when one is in love with one's soulmate, uh, one loves his or her voice. Uh, even uh, I don't know how you call this in English, but the, 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 the mis, uh, misuse of language, uh, the way she pronounces a certain word, uh, the kind of a mistake or the kind of, of expressions, the, 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 the error of the imperfection within her, because I think of, of a her, but it can be of a man, the imperfections of his or her expression, it's part of the charm that we call this. There are people whose laughter is positive and it communicates good vibes, etc., etc. <laughs> Not my own laughter. Yeah. Uh, here it's connected with objective or geist, uh, slum beggars, the welfare state, unemployment, etc., etc. So, yeah. Now we continue. I just need to see the full picture. So we have just seen the first part of subjective or geist. And now the second part, it is ordered as follow. Here it belongs to objective or geist. So it's in the continuity of this. So it's in pink, but it's not connected directly to that. But the structure is, it begins here. And then one, two, three. And eventually then it goes here. But I will show a... Uh, later. So briefly, uh, the feeling, so yeah, the, the feeling soul, the, 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 the soul which feels. Here we have the, the individual who experiences feelings and the, the, the birth of the self or the ego. The soul is the existing concept. What is the concept? It's explained in the logic of, of the concept precisely. I haven't talked about this yet. Uh, the soul is the totality of nature. This is the Schellingian view, this is the Fichtean view, and the soul is the Mona, this is the Leibnizian view. So here are the Germans. And the totality is Hegelian. <laughs> Very intelligent, these Germans. So here, the first part, the feeling soul in its immediacy. Here, European witches, uh, non-European witches, and uh, a European goddess uh, who talks about uh, these uh, aspects of uh, the anthropological determination of man. 
and the, 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 the pagans, and here he talks from a scientific perspective. So there is religion, science, uh, philosophy. Uh, yeah. Uh, so here, I, it is in, the, in the, the revival of the pagan community that people experience this kind of relationship, the, the magical is the magical relationship between spouses or between uh, soulmates or between members of the same folks community. Uh, there are people who feel this, but the problem is that they are only interested in the magical aspect, yeah, friends or spouses, or family members, but they do not see the full picture. It's vast, it's broad, it's demanding, it's complex, but uh, it, it gives meaning to, yeah. And, and someone like Schelling, he wrote books about his relationship with the dead. Uh, the, the, he hoped that he would see the, the, the spirit of, of his loved ones in his perspective on the other side or whatever and and uh, and also the, the, the yeah the, the magical connections between some some people here the death of the beloved relative here uh, we have uh, the irrational part of the soul which is predominantly here it's a little bit misogynistic but predominantly the feminine aspect, but males have an irrational aspect as well, a feminine aspect. And here are illustrations of, uh, it's an artistic and aesthetic expression of the irrationality of the female psyche. But actually, most songs uh, by women, they, they are simply the expression of the female psyche. And there is a kind of irrationality, a little bit of a chaotic aspect within the female psyche. That's what women need to be balanced by order and rationality, masculine rationality. That's that's patriarchy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, look, I've promoted female empowerment. Uh, don't uh, ask uh, too much power uh, because, uh, yeah. No, but seriously. Uh, Yeah. So we enter the realm of uh, self-feeling uh, with diseases and illnesses. Here it's borrowed from the CIA, so that's Anglo-Saxon empiricism, uh, madness, <laughs> a, a, a disease of the psychical, not physical, not psychological, but psychical, what do I say? And here I just put the name of Zizek because <laughs> I could not properly translate. So I say, okay, Zizek, uh, pff, he probably understands. Here it's Nietzschean, the inseparability of the bodily and the spiritual. Partly, yeah. Uh, I will not comment. Uh, these are determinations of the soul, the habits, I will not comment. So here that the toughening of the soul, maybe to become indifferent to the changes of physical conditions, one might say. Yeah. And here we are transitioning towards psychology, partly. So now I will just summarize briefly subjective Geist. We have seen the first part. The second part. And now the third part of the first part of subjective Geist. It's much shorter. This is the, the, the physical expression of the soul, one might say. Now the second part. It's really short as well. This is uh, the second part of the process of subjective ergeist. One perceives the world through a sensuous consciousness, perception, determination for the categories, uh, interaction with others, the dominance, dominated relationship, psychological motives, uh, desire to be recognized by the other, uh, and a universal self-consciousness, the fatherland, 
the flag, uh, the constitution, the, 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 the tribe, uh, the ancestors, whatever, a need to transcend oneself by adopting a higher sense of identity. Another third moment of subjective ergeist, which is psychology, the theoretical mind, here's Mr. Peterson, representation, insight, imagination, memory. So the, 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 all the plays of the poets and the, 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 the rhymes and the, the, the works of art, they are derived from the imagination of the artist. So there's the, the theoretical aspect, the practical aspect. Here we meet Mr. Peterson. And thought, uh, yeah, and here we have studies about IQ and YouTube channels which teach uh, the German language, but it can be found for any language. So we have just seen subjective or guys. So it is the process through which nature made manifest through man in the chronological perspective determines itself and the soul of nature become conscious of itself through the soul of man that's the, the world soul uh yeah and each individual is determined in his soul which is tied to the body partly to the whole of nature but also to his own particular Natur bestimmt height, namely its anthropological group. And th that's why there is. Here I will talk a little bit of controversy, but it's not controversial. Actually, it's, there is. Here I will just explain the method. Now I know broadly the structure uh, enough, but let us take the sound. It's not a simple uh, mechanical connection, but here we have the determination of acoustics within the realm of physics. If we mix these determinations, which are pervading the whole cosmos, but we mix this with the determination of, of race plus local geister plus so these are on a collective level plus the, 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 the individual determination of the individuals who perform uh, music, let us say. We obtain the various modes of expression of traditional Afro-American music. And there are music which are specifically the expression of the soul of a people. Jazz, blues, R&B, rap, uh, reggae, raga. Uh, soul, uh, uh, etc., etc. This is predominantly Afro American or African music, and there are modes of expression which are predominantly European rock, pop rock, punk rock, classical music, hard rock, hard, uh, heavy metal, metal, etc., etc. And, and folks music belongs to each people, and each particular people has its own folks music, but there are types of music which are predominantly the expression of the Afro-American soul and others which are predominantly the expression of the European soul. And then it goes for Asian as well and for the, the other peoples. But uh, basically, uh, and white people, they, they enjoy all sorts of music, usually. Not each individual, but the Breton. See, whereas, I don't know, but, uh, but um, metal, there are quantitatively, I'm sure, sociological analyses which show that metal is not appreciated a lot by non-Europeans. Uh, it's typically European. Not only it's not uh, uh, restricted for Europeans, but quantitatively, uh, yeah. But Europeans, they, they have an enjoyment for jazz, music, blues, R&B, etc., etc. But sp spontaneously... Europeans, they are more attracted by what I call European music, namely, from my uh, empirical perspective, teenagers, this was uh, Evanescence, or Avril Lavigne, or uh, etc. This is kind of a romantic European music in the modern day. Uh, yeah, this is the European soul which expresses itself in a way.
I'll make a pause because I'm kind of tired. And uh, yeah, but I'll continue. Uh, objective of guys to then, uh, yeah, I will continue. Uh, just make a pause. Okay, I've just made a, a couple of minutes of pause. Now I would just comment uh, the copy of a document about IQ, just to, to, to show the IQ distribution. So here is the IQ quantified from below 70 to 130 and plus with the discrete categorization, the, dis the discrete moments. So it's continuous, but it can be discreetly divided because it's quantitative. And here is the rating in qualitative language, namely uh, average in a population whose median is 100, the typical English traditional population, it's average. So between 90 and 109, it's average. Uh, between 80 and 89, it's low average, borderline, defective, etc. And here we have high average, superior, and very superior. And uh, so here, the, 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 the average IQ here is 102 broadly, and here it's 80. And we will see the distribution in terms of percentages of a population whose average IQ is broadly, let us say, 100 to simplify. But actually, it's 100. Let us simplify. So in a, in, a, in a normal population, the number of very... No, actually, it's slightly more because otherwise it would be balanced. But uh, yeah, let us say 102. The number of very, the percentage of very superior individuals, namely people with IQs of over 130, is broadly 4.4%. Superior, 8.2%. And high average, 18.1%. So if we add very simply, we have broadly 30% of the population in a population whose IQ is 100, broadly, we have broadly 30%. Here I simplify to the utmost, who is high average. And here is the distribution, uh, it's kind of balanced uh, for the rest. And in a population whose median IQ is 80, so more than 20 points lower, here is the distribution, broadly 0.1% with a very superior IQ, 0.3% with a superior, and 0.7% with high average. And 28% with low average, 30.6% with borderline, and 21% defective. This is how it is distributed depending on the, 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 the median IQ of the sample population for a 20-point gap difference broadly. And here is the ratio. So for these differences in average IQ, we have 44 very superior individual for one uh, very superior, 27 to 1, 26 to 1, etc., etc., uh, yeah, and uh, broadly, uh, here we have uh, two lower than average of the B population for one in the A population, uh, five um, uh, to one, and here eight to one. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is the relationship. That's why when two population are competing on an economic level, for instance, and economics is partly competition, uh, the group of population whose IQ is superior, they produce many more superior, in terms of purely quantitative intelligence, individuals. That's why there are inequalities. Yeah. Yeah. And here is an illustration from another document from uh, the 1960s in the US. Here it's another classification. Uh, of, of grouping, more simplified, but basically when two groups of population with a 15 to 20 IQ difference points are compared, uh, here we have 25 times as many superior, 10 times, etc. So I will just uh, switch up towards the, the other document. Uh, It simply explains uh, differences of outcome. It's really that simple. I mean, there are other factors, but uh, basically it's, uh, it brings explanation. <coughs> yeah. It's not rigorously because it can be changed with evolution over time, with changes of, of uh, 
genetic changes and all, but that's just to, sh to show the broad repartition, the broad, pro pro broad proportions. Uh, this explains the inequalities between all human groups eventually, in terms of achievement, uh, social status, etc., etc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here I will make a brief uh, comment <sighs> about poetry. I was reading a uh, romantic European literature during my, my pause for a couple of minutes. And what I will try to explain, because at this moment I don't know when or who is going to watch this, but the pagan revival, it simply consists in individuals rediscovering their identity by going through the process of subjective ergeist, but not only, I will not talk about the revival of paganism as of now, but it's simply individuals who go through the process of discovering their soul. That's why they have mystical experiences, partly because they, they do not just discover their soul, but they also have an understanding. Here the word under, under, understanding is kind of important, although it was not uh, planned, but of objective or guys. That's why they, they have both aspects. And that's complicated, but basically the, the inspired uh, pagan Europeans, they are those who have conceptualized unconsciously their own soul and also the geist, the objective or geist of their society, the spirit of the times, the spirit and the soul. And I have spent countless hours uh, watching videos by uh, Caroline. And since I'm, I'm in a romantic mood, in a good sense, I was reading a uh, Cyrano. The ugly guy, uh, whatever, whatever. It's a uh, typically European. And here, yeah, what I'm talking about, Europe. Here it's typically European because uh, I've just discovered uh, Sherry Lauren ASMR and Mr. Edward Dutton. And these people, they are kind of insane, <laughs> but in a good sense. Namely, she dresses like a nymph, not like a nympho, like a nymph of, of elf mythology, of European elfic mythology. And he dresses... Uh, <laughs> in all sorts of ways and this is typically european namely insane white people in the good sense who dress like a <laughs> who wear costumes to to promote uh, science or to promote uh, ismr this is insane but i was thinking about this determination of the souls i was thinking about caroline i've never met I, I will talk to you, Caroline. I don't know if you watch, will watch this. I don't know, but I, I've never met you in person. Probably I never will, but uh, I, I, I kind of, I am attracted. I will not say that I love because I kind of, actually, I kind of love your voice, your language, your laughter, your sigh, maybe your tears. Hopefully they are not caused by me. <laughs> but seriously uh, we live in an era here i'm in a romantic mood i don't know if it's gonna last very long but we're in an era where people can kind of fall in love with the voice of others uh, by listening to them they can fall in love with uh, with ordinary people through the mediation of pure language or thought or or expression or the soul in its immaterial aspect it can be kind of weird because there can be stalkers, and uh, I am partly a stalker, as they call this. But basically, uh, I just read a passage by Cyrano uh, in French, and I, I can I can I cannot help but think about you, Caroline, when I think about this. But it's not because I love you, because I actually, uh, I mean, I, I partly do, but uh, <laughs> there are also uh, other women in my life. <laughs> But you are the kind of person that I could fall in love with just because of the sound of your voice and the intelligent idea that you speak, of course. Yeah. And the great poetry that you write, obviously. That's why I'm frustrated because there are these people that I think I understand very well, but 
I cannot communicate with them and when they hear about me, I don't know where I will be. But either I will have a, a, a different mood or a different perspective or I will no longer be there. Uh, I can live with that, but uh, yeah. It's just to illustrate the, the the fact that when we kind of when we are attracted by an other person, we learn to love eventually uh, her her way of, of talking, her the way she talks, uh, potato head, uh, doll trite, uh, uh, jellyfish, uh, spineless, whatever. <laughs> I've, I've listened to you talk so so long and so often that I understand your expressions. Uh, yeah. Is spineless jellyfish potato head adults from the idiot right? <laughs> I can't help when I'm in a good... Uh, state of mind but love this and uh, yeah that's what i wanted to say so now i will talk about objective of geist from one type of american woman to the other <laughs> and here actually it's very serious uh, it, it was kind of serious what I said, but here we have traditionalist, mostly American women, or Anglo-Saxon at least, uh, who are reviving traditionalism in the modern world, namely family marriage. But there's a difference between the women of subjective ergeist, who are in touch with their soul as, as cosmic, uh, cosmic beings, one might say, uh, here and there are also the males <sighs> yeah these kind of women they are in touch with their soul and the traditionalist women they are in touch with their objective or geist namely uh, their role as uh, traditional women but they are uh, here they would be kind of Christian and the other they would be pagan but paganism and Christianity are moments of the same unfolding totality. Paganism is the realm of obje uh, subjective or geist. And Christianity, the realm of objective or geist. I simplify to the utmost. <sighs> well, they are also strong, independent, free-spirited, but in a different kind of way. Yeah. Uh, so here is objective or guy. So it begins with family, marriage, etc. This is borrowed from Anglo-Saxon statistical mind. Then uh, the economy uh, is composed of family. So here I will show just the, the broad picture. I don't know if we see clearly, but I will zoom in. So the determinations of objective or guy. We begin here. It's a uh, Hegel. I kind of disagree. <laughs> kind of disagree with Hegel. I never thought I would say this, but he makes this begin with. Uh, das Recht uh, here, that's what there's A but actually there has to be people who influence law so let us begin with family, marriage, education, men and women uh, so here it's men and women in a social realm whereas in subjective or guys it, it was in, in a natural way in a way so th there's the distinction between the, the natural family and the social family the natural family is the family in which people are born and the social family is the family that they choose to marry their wife and produce offsprings eventually. So here it's more social relationships. So there is family, uh, behavior, responsibility, ethics, good and evil. This is the morality. Uh, it's the, the family, they develop uh, a culture. These are determinations of culture, mostly in the modern American uh, context, but also uh, sociology, which here is tied to economics, I, I agree that it's not very 
uh, let us see the full picture but there are so many elements to incorporate that it's not very aesthetically rigorous but here we have family culture education as instruction not upbringing but instruction here we have sociology economics finance technology uh, here we have law and legislation on an individual and collective right money and banking the government and politics here and here we have uh, geopolitics which is derived from the deep state and also uh, also uh, the government and uh, money and banking so that's from the lower to the higher it's not in terms of it's the term of, of, of simplicity in a sense that and everything is inter related in order to understand any event of, of political and social life one has to, to have in mind all the aspects so families they gather together here it's in a chronological perspective to form societies they divide themselves depending on the level of complexity to classes urbanization these, these categories are borrowed from the cia <laughs> That's how the Anglo-Saxon think, and the sociologist as well. Uh, the division of labor. So in order to understand the society, one has to understand the labor force, the, the, the division in various activities, the unions, uh, the unemployment rates. And unemployment is partly tied to the educational system, to uh, the culture of work or leisure, to the family values, to the economic conditions, which themselves are kind, kind of connected with the financial aspect. Uh, the, the unemployment is also tied with subjective guys, namely IQ, etc., etc. The development of technology, uh, which pe put people out of work, or enable the thriving, etc., the thriving of talent. And here we have the media, which, okay, they are here, but actually they would be between the government the, the banking system the culture so here the, the spatial divide is kind of arbitrary uh, i put this uh, where i could but actually the media they shape the mindset of the people and what happens what has been happening in the west over the past 10 to 15 years is a revolt of the people against the media and by revolting against the false narratives of the media they reconstruct the view of the totality and the culmination is a uh, the, the system that I've been trying to promote. So now I have seen, I showed a broad picture. Now I will comment more, not very rigorously, but nonetheless. Here it's the context of the modern Western world, mostly the American Anglo Saxon world. There is a revolt against feminism because women are, are being undressed sociobiologically. Dangerous men. <laughs> Very smart men are spreading the knowledge of how to manipulate women by simply giving them what they want and what women want when they are in their proper mindset is simply to be traditional women. And that's how they become fascinating. <laughs> that's kind of cheap because I'm borrowing my ideas from... Uh, I'm Stella, obviously. And here are I, I, the different type of, of women. In, they are involved in politics, uh, discussion gender, uh, party politics, but partly a restoration of Christian morality and uh, uh, marriage, etc. But here are the comical aspects. That's maybe my Nietzsche and a vaccine. That of course there is virtue in marriage, and there has to be. But basically, what women really think. Uh, when uh, they they enter into marriage, uh, that's, that's what women think. <laughs> I'm in a mood to laugh. But actually, marriage here. I'm I'm talking as a traditionalist. Serious. It's the bedrock of society. And if the marriage, the family unit is broken, the whole society becomes degenerate. That's what has been happening in the West. So the first moment of restoring order uh, in a traditionalist perspective is to restore. Uh, marriage and the family unit but it doesn't prevent uh, kind of a, a truth of a man and female relationship with here traditionalism namely 
restoration of marriage and uh, modernity, I mean, the kind of twisted aspect, they can coincide. And honestly, especially, uh, I know, I know, this kind of uh, uh, Christian women, <laughs> self-proclaimed, uh, what they want when they enter marriage is what uh, Skylar Grey expresses and what men want. Uh, of course, there's the official story. We have to marry for the sake of producing offspring to build strong societies, for the sake of respecting Christian morality. Of course, it's true. And if you don't, uh, the society has serious problems. But what men and women in every society, what they think, basically, what men want. Not only that, but here I'm trying to spread ideas by uh, spraying songs. It's expressed <laughs> in this song. I will let, uh, yeah. And here is a poetic way of uh, expressing uh, the interest from a sociobiological, but also social, sociological, economic aspect of uh, the interest of marriage. I could make a lecture on economic, sociobiology, etc. But actually here Eminem expresses this very well. From the perspective of a, of a ruler who wants the good of society, that's kind of the mindset because not all women are beautiful. Not all men are attractive in terms of whatever women find attractive. So the compromise is that, okay, if they can marry and produce offspring, the society will keep functioning, even if their motives are not always very noble. But uh, <laughs> that's my way of trying to reconcile. Evola, modern pop culture, rigorous thinking, sociology, economics, uh, the European psyche, it could be better, uh, but that's what I've been able to produce as of now. So here I'm very serious. There is a rise of the, the female archetypal uh, spirit. And here the spirit of uh, uh, Juno, Hera, Estia, uh, the, the goddesses of, of the, the, the household. Uh, in, in subjective regard, we had cosmic goddesses. And here we have European goddesses archetype of the household. They are simply reconstructing the archetypal uh, traditional women, namely, uh, who uh, take care of, of her household so that her husband can take care of the rest of society. That's traditional gender role division. And only in America we find a reconstruction of... Uh, yeah, I've understood this. I've made countless mistakes. Because I thought uh, way too fast or way too slow or whatever. But that's how I interpret this. And it's partly true. Namely, in order to explain the rise of traditionalist women on the internet, which produce women like Stella, uh, one has to understand that the destructive process at work uh, and, and the, the, the dialectical respond to this process. So the economy. Here I borrow the categories from the CIA. And uh, all the, the data here, the statistics have to be implemented for every country and everything is interrelated, namely a rise in, in growth rates or GDP per capita brings in investment, confidence, uh, economic uh, recession or inflation, it brings problems. Uh, people are changing their, 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 um, their morality. Uh, they are uh, changing their political views. Uh, everything is interconnected, but I just showed a broad picture with the, the knowledge that eventually at some moment people will watch, intelligent people who understand what I'm talking about, and they will understand, okay, we have to do the work because as an individual here, I'm trying to be good. I cannot think about everything. I cannot write books about sociology, economics, uh, politics, uh, sociobiology, philosophy, the interconnectedness of everything, political theory, because I cannot do all the work because my role, as I understand it, is simply to share the view of the totality. And I'm, I've been trying to do this. And one of my problems is how to convince intelligent people to spend four or five, five hours of their time watching my videos knowing that I have no reputation as an intellectual, etc. I have tried to establish this. I have failed. But basically, when intelligent people watch my video, watch my video, they will understand that this is simply the method of knowledge. Uh, here, it's, it's not very serious, not very rigorous. But in order to understand any event, this is what Hegel means when he says the truth is the whole. First, there is the formal totality. And then there's the totality unfolding itself. And here I'm kind of pissed off, but not really. I understand because it's my own fault. But basically, 
I am just trying to share the method of knowledge with intelligent people, but I am not angry that much because I understand why would scholars spend four or five hours of their time or even more watching my videos knowing that precisely I am a nobody. I understand the comical aspect when I say I am a nobody because I am a spirit. I understand. I, understand. I can anticipate. But basically, <sighs> I am kind of frustrated because I, I, for, for a long time I felt that I was dumb and now I'm starting to realize that actually I may be smart but I cannot communicate my truth which here is really simplified is too difficult for ordinary people maybe even for intelligent people but it's not actually it, it, intelligent people with a high IQ and an education they should be able to understand my truth and understand that they have to work as well and here I'm, I'm, I'm in a good mood, but I can't reach them, so I am partly frustrated, but I will, I have, uh, I came prepared. I have an ace in the hole, uh, uh, I have a trick up my sleeve, whatever. I have still many, many uh, ideas uh, how to try to make my video successful, but I will not give up on the rigorous aspect. That's why I will keep producing as long as I can long video where I comment the totality, so that someone who randomly stumbles upon the video and watches the totality may have a clue of what I'm talking about. I take a deep breath and I keep commenting. I'm becoming insane against myself, but okay, it could be worse, but this is just what I think. Because what I do is not very rigorous, but actually it's much more rigorous than what anyone else does. It's not because they are stupid, it's because they do not have the, the, the German perspective. Yeah, what was I saying? Family, marriage, economics. Yeah. So here, in order for my, my central intelligence system to be functional, the, the, the data of every country eventually have to be constantly updated, but I can't do this on my own. So if, if I really have no choice, I will do it. I will find a way to actualize whatever, but this is simply how to, to, to think correctly. Finance is the blood of the economy which makes, which determines sociology, which determines education, which determines the, 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 the children and, and how they grow up with their values and their sense of morals, etc., which reciprocally determine the whole process. So that's a process of reciprocal determination. That's why it's very difficult to think about the totality, but at least with the proper categories, as long as I can work, I will improve the aesthetic aspect. Here it's kind of confused. But uh, I, yeah, I grant myself a few hours per day to improve what I call my system. <sighs> yeah. So let us talk about sociology. Hegelian sociology is just the formal method. It has to take into account all the aspects: anthropology, economics, and nature, and art, etc., etc. Every layer of being has to be interpreted through all the others. At least formally, it's impossible maybe in real time because it goes too fast, but that's simply a way to understand. <laughs> Here, I will talk about the negative from a sociological perspective. A beggar is the negative of a society. And here, the positive aspect for society is that only a beggar can speak the truth about the society. And this video on the internet can be found uh, and the same goes, I understood this uh, recently, with people in prisons, namely if one wants to know the truth about the society, one has to talk to the prisoners, the criminals and the beggars, because, not because they are smarter or wiser, but because they give the perspective of those who are outside of society. That's why they, they partly reveal the truth about the society. Uh, we find this in many American movies. Uh, uh, the, the, the Eminem does this in his song, like the, the, the good, here I will trash talk, a little, but I, I don't need to because Eminem did this already, but basically trash talking the good uh, white family, not in the traditional sense, but the, the, the white Christian family who think we are the good guys because... Uh, our set of morality, uh, we work hard, we have Christian value, etc., etc. But the society in which they participate systematically produce uh, beggars, criminals, drug addicts, degenerates of all sorts. And here is my leftist self, but my intelligent leftist self, my Marxist training, 
theatricality and deception are powerful agents to the, to the initiated, uh, to the uh, uninitiated, but we are initiated, etc. I know a Marxist, that's why I have intellectual respect for the intelligent leftist, because they have a totalitarian, a total, a total, a totalitarian also, that's kind of the, the, the degenerate aspect, but a total view, and they understand that uh, they are the stupid leftists who say, oh, the criminals, they are victims of society, and they are the intelligent leftists who say, okay, uh, there is the lumpen proletariat, but actually it is society which brings forth its own negation in a sociological perspective, and in this sense, the good-hearted, not good-hearted, but the, the how do you call this? Uh, to the Christian, typically white Christian family who think good about themselves because they say, oh, our kids, they don't do drugs. Uh, the kind of white families that Eminem in his songs, in his early career, rebelled against. The, the, the bourgeois family. But no, now the process has changed and now the bourgeois family is under attack by the negative aspect of society. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, there has to be the proper judgment and to criticize the white bourgeois family in, 2000, in the 2020s, it was fashionable maybe 20 years ago or even 10 years ago, but the zeitgeist has changed and it's not, maybe it's a matter of hypocrisy, but actually it's a matter of being, uh, have the proper, having the proper judgment. Uh, today, actually, the, the people who defend the traditional value of a healthy uh, family upbringing, they are the good guys in a sense of the perspective, because it should be universalized. And the, the leftist or non -white, uh, the white leftist or non-white who promote uh, kind of uh, the, 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 the chaos uh, at all levels, uh, they should not be promoted. Simply, it's a matter of balance. I failed maybe to understand this at some moment, but now I understand clearly. Uh, to be fair, it, it requires punishment for the guilty and actually i am only i am the only person who is guilty but it requires to punish but only those who the, the proper person uh, at the proper moment and not that's the problem of the white left namely they attack what they call oppressors but the, the oppressors of 20 years ago or 50 years ago or 100 years ago they are no longer the same oppressors as today so if you have the right perspective but at the wrong time you are wrong in a way i understood this so those who attack the white the traditional white family by saying they are oppressors no because uh, here it's just common sense again american common sense namely the the people who suffer from the dysfunction of sociology the educational system crime etc of course mostly in america mostly blacks suffer from predominantly black crime rates but also whites that's why here it's good universality, Christian universality. That's why crime and, and social and sociological degeneracy has to stop for the good of everyone. This is a Walker, Texas Ranger. In the eyes of the Ranger, uh, the unexpected stranger, uh, you better know the truth of right and wrong, etc., etc. Yeah. What was I saying? So yeah, the, all here I will not comment because it would be too long, but basically every determination has to be taken into account for the mediation of all the other. The, the percentage of welfare, de, welfare expenses, not welfare dependency, but uh, the two are connected actually, welfare expenses and welfare dependency, it depends on economic factors, political factors, moral, because it is morality which influences politics and economics through manipulation through the media can influence morality but it's also influenced by anthropology namely who is the population demographically and anthropologically uh, what is the education of the population who controls the, the, the common narrative what are the media who finances the media all the determinations of objective ergeist and also subjective ergeist have to be taken into account and even the determination of nature namely what the stupid socialists in, in mostly uh, non-Western countries, they do whenever they find oil or gas or whatever uh, deposit, as I call this, as they call this, uh, in in their country, they use this to finance public reforms by by turning their population into welfare recipients instead of investing in 
Programs which would have long-lasting positive effect, they try to fix the immediate problem, which can have positive aspect but also negative in the long run, by buying the votes of the masses. That's the, really the, the degenerate aspect of democracy. When the governments, the governors, those who govern, they, they use money, which eventually is the money of the people that will, they will have to repay in taxes, to, to, to buy the, 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 their vote or the, the, the social tranquility or whatever. And it's not good, neither for whites nor for non-whites. That's universalism. Yeah. Uh, yeah, here are songs and videos about the educational system. Uh, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to be. Um, I don't want to save the nation. Uh, I just want to live my life. Every day is a celebration. Uh, whatever, whatever. Uh, the, uh, he told me I was an amount to to uh, what. Um, He told me I would not amount to shit. I made my first million and counted it. Now look at it. A fucking dropout that quit. Stupid as shit. Rich as fuck and proud of it. I know the song. I will not sing because it can be found on the internet. But basically, uh, the educational system, there's a problem because there are ethnic tension. There's a lack of discipline. There's a lack of rigor. The, the, the teachers, they have no authority. Uh, it's public education. So it's promotion of uh, bureaucracy. All the determinacies of the books that I've promoted at the beginning of the video have to be incorporated. There are many problems and it brings about unemployment and resentment and then people are easily seduced by manipulative deceptive policies promoted by mostly the left, the, the negative left who uses the good-hearted aspect of the people to manipulate, etc, etc, etc. I could make a lecture, uh, a 10 hours long lecture on how to manipulate people by a uh, uh, manipulating the, 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 whatever the hopes and expectations and the, the economy, the, the financial rates and whatever, whatever, because I've understood. But basically now uh, I won't, I just, uh, if people want me to talk, <laughs> I will talk, but I don't think, uh, but uh, pff, otherwise I just showed the, 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 the fundamental determinacies and here free education. So here is a, a completely bankrupt educational system that people are starting to be become aware of. And here's the solution brought about by American ingenuity and, and intelligence, namely the internet and, and public and free education. Uh, here, uh, a Viking uh, teaching uh, lectures uh, on, on many topics. That's amazing. So people, they can do whatever they want, keep sending their, their children to school so that it, it might dumb down their children, uh, bring about debt, uh, student loans, uh, yeah. and the PISA test. Uh, everyone eventually will know that it reflects the IQ of a population and they will notice that there are differences in IQ between the various nations, which help explain economic phenomenon worldwide. <sighs> this is borrowed from the CIA. And th uh, about uh, this, I will uh, insert uh, not a, a document, but I will just comment one of my documents. I just showed abroad here are people who speak common sense about economics and here are the Marxists who speak common sense also about debt. Here are intelligent people who talk about politics. They cannot be easily classified as partly Marxist. Uh, I don't know. I haven't watched them, but these are intelligent people. You know, they are kind of subtle. Uh, yeah. Uh, here the government, uh, the division of the government, uh, it can, it, it, for even every government, uh, at least democratic with separation of power, the political parties, here we could have the list of all the political parties, all the political leaders, all the, 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 the number of members, the, the, finan the, the fin finance of the party, who finances the party, is it the, 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 the members, is it publicly financed, are there private investors, who controls the communication, etc., all the data, Eventually, if no one takes the formal aspect of my system, I will keep working and I will keep incorporating eventually the name of every politician on this planet until someone realizes, but hey, he's talking about us. Yes. What else? And if there are politicians who want to scheme and to manipulate, they can use my method because uh, my method is simply better than their own. Uh, I'm not on the level of 
I would say on the level of God when it comes to manipulation, but <laughs> I am smarter in terms of manipulation than uh, pff, whatever the deep state uh, can think about because uh, they don't know who controls them consciously. Yeah. Technological change brought about by economic in, in, in investment, or not yeah, investment, but also uh, invention brings about sociological change in terms of the repartition of of, of, of of the division of labor. Here I speak randomly about very basic sociological determination, but what I've realized precisely that's why I'm becoming slightly insane is that do people know this? Because this is high school knowledge. This is what a, a, a 16 years old person should know. But uh, do they know that? And the more I talk to ordinary people, I realize actually they don't. That's when I start to think, okay, I'm trying to talk to PhDs and uh, and actually I, I also, I have to talk to people with lower intelligence. It's not their fault, etc. But I have to talk to people with a low education and a low quantitative intelligence because they are the people who are being exploited by the system to produce all the wealth. Who controls the system? I don't know. I'm becoming insane because I failed to communicate. I could make videos which last five minutes or 10 minutes and, and I would have lots of subscribers maybe because I could talk. Uh, yeah, but the problem is that the truth that I try to share is complex and it requires attention, focus and a minimum of, of, of concentration. And I cannot avoid the misunderstandings. I've understood this, that I, I, there will be misunderstandings. I cannot avoid them, but I try to minimize. But now the video will be at least five hours long. But uh, I will make shorter videos, but I will as long as I do not remake a video like this with even better categories, even a clearer understanding, I will keep promoting this video because this is the latest one and I keep getting smarter. Uh, but uh, I'm kind of frustrated because, uh, because my truth eventually I know has to apply to everyone at least in this in the universal aspect, but I can neither reach the very intelligent nor uh, the, the lower uh, intelligent, the, 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 the people with the lower intelligence. I don't know who I am talking to. That's why I make videos where I talk to myself. And eventually maybe people will find, hey, this guy who talks to himself, uh, that's kind of weird. Uh, maybe they will stumble upon this video at some moment. I don't know empirically in what state of consciousness I will be. I know that uh, pfft, Maybe I will be I will be dead already. I don't know, but uh, we are the twenty eighth of September. It's eight twelve p.m. I intend to keep working every day with trying to 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 solve my contradictions, knowing that it's it's impossible to solve them uh, uh, completely at, at the same time because I suffer some so many contradictions. But basically, yeah. That's why I've understood this, that the reason why I've been trying to communicate with these people, mostly uh, in one way or another over, over the past few months, or even these people is simply because they have gone through what I will now call an alchemical process. And they are in the state of mind to be able to receive my truth. There is a reason why their life has been the way it has been. Uh, it, I'm talking to you because eventually you will have to, to hear my videos at some moment. You, you have gone through an alchemical process, a phenomenological process, namely, if now you had, uh, it won't happen, uh, but 
if it, uh, just uh, tomorrow you could take uh, five hours of your time to watch my videos or my video you would understand because you have the iq the intelligence the experience and there are people who have the iq but uh, no experience and those who have the interest but not the iq or not the experience so pff. So I will not systematically comment because I could, I could make this rigorously and if I could really uh, work peacefully, that's what I would do. <laughs> I would spend uh, decades, hundreds of years maybe, commenting the interrelatedness of everything because probably that would be fascinating. But as of now, I have to work as fast as I can while finding the proper balance between enlightening others by talking in an ordinary language without overcomplexification, while at the same time demanding some sort of cognitive expectations from the people who watch this, that they have to do the thinking for themselves. Because what I do is to steal other people's ID by reading their books, watching their video and just uh, synthesizing in a way. But at some moment, that's a, an interactive process. That's the good aspect, uh, the positive aspect of interaction that the people will have to, to use this system uh, to think about their own life and about the world. Uh, I don't know what to say. If, uh, if you are a good-hearted leftist and you want to improve the economic condition of the country, you have to understand the formal aspect of my system, namely that everything is interconnected. If you are a negative schemer of the left, if you want to manipulate the masses to dumb them down, turn them into, into idiots, you also have to study my system to understand how a totality works. If you are a right-wing revolutionary uh, of the libertarian type or of the, the nationalist type, you have to study my system in order to understand how the system, what you call the system, how it works and how to overthrow uh, those who control the system. Yeah. So eventually... Uh, everyone will have to study my system if they want to, to, to achieve anything uh, in terms of intellectual cognition. Uh, that's my, my, my faith, basically. Uh, that as long as, as there, are, uh, there are tension of, of any sort, anywhere on a political, geopolitical, psychological uh, uh, level, as long as there are schemers, the schemers will be interested in my system. And here it's just the formal aspect because I made a video a couple of days ago, about the, or the three days ago, I don't know, the, the, the presentation of the, 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 the spiritual and intellectual life. That's another moment because here I introduce one sidedness, namely people who are smarter than the average. But if I had to balance in a really complex Hegelian manner, I would have to put for every intellectual, uh, intelligent people, I would have to, to bring the counterbalance, namely. The, 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 for every mikto, I would have to introduce the, the feminist. For every traditionalist women, I would have to introduce the feminist ideology. Uh, for every uh, minimalist, I would have to introduce the, the, the excesses of production. Uh, for every uh, conspiracy theorist who is actually smart, I would have to introduce that's what I'm doing, the totality of the system. For every libertarian, there has to be a Marxist counterbalance. I do this not very rigorously, but at least formally in what I call the phenomenology of spirit. And here it's the encyclopedia. And I just show uh, maybe the, the, the people who are smart and uh, who have... Uh... <sighs> okay, I'm starting to lose it a little bit because I'm, I've been talking for more than four hours. So now, uh, I will not comment because I could speak for hours and hours and hours if I wanted it to make, to make things rigorous. I just want to show the formal aspect of how to understand one, one society. Here I can mix the determinations uh, uh, of, of ethnicity and sport. Uh, the people's interest in the various sports depend on their ethnic determinations partly, namely NASCAR in the US, it's mostly a white people's sport. The National Hockey, uh, Hockey League, it's mostly for whites. The NBA, it's kind of for everyone, but the players are mostly black because of anthropological determination and probably a higher proportion of Afro-American follow basketball than they do hockey. 
and probably there's a reason uh, anthropological determination whatever whatever yeah the police in order to understand the problems of police authority uh, who finance the police the state obviously who finances the state what are the the, the 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 beliefs of those who control the financial institutions what is the morality of a people how does it come from namely in america probably and in most countries uh there's still some sort of respect for the police force but in a country like france uh it's one of the most despised institutions by the broad majority the people they they despise the police uh, and they kind of worship here yeah, i'm caricaturing because i'm tired and i'm a little bit that's not true but actually the, the 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 symbol of the police officer is not the same in 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 america as it is in france for instance where he really he suffers from bad reputation because he's a symbol of order and the french they have a tendency towards the well and, and in 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 more authoritarian state uh, the police has an even more prestigious or uh, sometimes a negative aspect, uh, namely only in, in, in some decadent Western countries, the police are allowed to be treated like clowns, where the criminals, here it tells a lot about the spirit of a society, when the criminals, uh, the, the police fear the criminals more than the criminals fear the police, which is the case in most Western countries where crime is tolerated and sometimes even financed by the state, there's a problem, a problem at all levels, yeah i could i could make uh, the, the people here i will be kind of right wing but common sense right wing people who talk about controlling climate change we have to prevent climate change here i'm just repeating ideas that are heard uh, in common conversation but they are smart the politicians in power over the past uh, many decades in the way they are unable to reduce unemployment, to suppress unemployment. How could they, it's very easy actually, how could they act to such a way that they can control the climate, uh, the, 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 the variation of temperature and degrees, uh, uh, one degree of lower, higher, or for the next uh, five, uh, 500 years or 1000 years, etc. They cannot even lower down the unemployment rate. And the reason why they don't is because there's a very complex process, but basically here it's just common sense, right-wing criticism, uh, namely the politicians are incompetent at solving very simple problems like how to prevent the children from being turned into idiots. From the perspective of a politician on a random, on, a, on an average level of consciousness, that's the purpose. On a, in the grand scheme of things, there is a reason why people are turning into idiots because an excess of intelligence can be problematic. Yeah, but on an average level of consciousness, they cannot solve the problem of unemployment for the youth, of degradation of, of intelligence, uh, the problem of debt. I mean, they can't solve any problem uh, because the system functions by creating its own problems. That's, uh, yeah. So how the, the people who say we have to implement legislation to control uh, the regulation of the climate for the next 200 years. That's either complete stupidity or manipulation or both no not both because no but either stupidity or manipulation but uh, that's one of the problem with white leftists with which i i mostly identify in some of my own but basically they want to take care of the future children of the 23rd century while in their own society there are people who are victims of unemployment crime uh, drug addiction uh, exploitation, economic exploitation, uh, mental uh, manipulation. Uh, I'm not taking the side of the good guys, but uh, simply I've come to a point where reality has become so complex that basically what has to, to happen is just restoration of order, uh, simply order. Because order is what enables uh, all the other goods to, to eventually occur, <sighs> whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I borrow this from the CIA. All the clear blue is just copied from the CIA, but what they lack 
is the conceptual view and the interconnectedness with the totality and the logical categories and the method and uh, the, 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 the CIA, they do not have a list of the people who are spiritual and enlightened uh, because they don't even understand, basically. They do not understand that the, 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 the modern pop culture, it reflects the soul of a people. Uh, yeah, they, they do not understand the process of consciousness interacting with the object and, and, and modifying the object by the process of beco becoming aware of this. The CIA, they are very smart, but they are not on the level of German metaphysicians. When they understand, eventually they will have to. The level of complexity, here I'm not in a mood to laugh, the level of complexity, which drives me insane sometimes, within the mind of Hegel, uh, they will say, okay, uh, we thought, uh, uh, you think you were smart, uh, but the guy who hired you, he'll do the same to, to you. What do you believe in? I believe that whatever doesn't kill me makes me stranger. And I partly believe that uh, my, my spirit is immortal, in a way. Uh, so maybe that's why I'm so strange. The, the CIA, they do not understand that the movies about the, the mob and the mafia, etc., they speak more truth about the methods of the CIA and about the society that the CIA are in control of than what they think that they know themselves. And here only the... the <laughs> I will laugh, but here only uh, German philosophy can teach that there is more truth in fiction than... Uh, than in reality at some level of metaphysical plane of understanding. Because the Anglo-Saxons, they understand the data and the empirical aspect. That's what I said earlier in the video about physics, but they do not understand the process of the self-interaction of consciousness with the object. Namely, they do not see the development of spirit because consciousness, accumulating knowledge and, and an experience of the world is simply the phenomenology of spirit. I'm not sure that uh, reading German metaphysics is part of the requirement training of uh, whoever controls uh, or think that they do uh, the process. Simply that. So, yeah. Here are smart Hegelians. Some of the European gods and goddesses. Spiritual Europeans as well. Also, people who have a high level of consciousness through various means, uh, science, uh, wisdom and divine revelation, philosophy. So there are the, the philosophers with no cosmic consciousness. There is the, the cosmic consciousness without philosophy. There is a mixture of the two. There is spiritual consciousness and very, very high intelligence with no formal knowledge of neither philosophy nor <sighs> pen psychism or whatever. So basically what I could say is that I understand pretty much everyone, but no one understands me. <sighs> I can read you like a magazine. That's Taylor who says so. Uh, I can I can understand uh, pretty much. If I was given a, a peaceful uh, opportunity to to study the, the intellectual life of any person, uh, I could I could understand everything about them. Maybe that's why I would love them eventually. <laughs> but uh, I I I am uh, I try to 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 go to 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 the point. But even when I simplify to the utmost, it's way too complex. <sighs> So yeah, now I have seen the whole process. Now I will, because at this point uh, I can afford to be a little bit more controversial. So I will just introduce another document. Here is my, my, my manipulative self. <laughs> I don't know who I am trying to manipulate, but basically uh, it's just the view of the totality or almost all the countries of the world. Europe, 
in Northern Europe, Central Europe, Southern Europe, Eastern Europe, Asia, Central Asia, Middle East, Arabic Peninsula, what I call Aryan Asia, Northeast Asia, Southeast Asia, Oceania, Antarctica, Africa, Northern Africa, Western Sub-Saharan Africa, Central Sub-Saharan Africa, Eastern Sub-Saharan Africa, Horn of Africa, Africa, Indian Ocean, Southern Sub-Saharan Africa, America, North America, Central America, South America, with just the fundamental, with all the countries or most of them that I found in various books on the internet, I have just listed countries and I've just put some fundamental determinations which might help clarify really the basic of of countries on a political level, uh, the GDP, uh, the average IQ, uh, there are countries uh, missing, uh, the population in millions, the GDP in billions of dollars, Th these the numbers they date sometimes from a couple of years ago, so they may not be up to date, but it's brought it to give a broad vision because it changes constantly, obviously, and the GDP per capita uh, the anthropology, namely the, the, the ethnic and genetic composition and the average IQ, and just it enables to see more clearly an anthropology is the, 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 the genetic uh, subspecies. So, uh, just to, to correlate, it's not to say that they are better, it's just to, to, to explain. And with the colors, here IQ above 95, above 85, above 75, lower than 75, and the GDP in uh, the GDP per capita in uh, dollars above five, uh, 50,000, above 20,000, etc. So these are the colors, and there's just a, a self evident correlation. So, simply to understand very broadly what a country is, very, very simply. Because ideally, all the determination that I've showed in the previous document have to be incorporated. But basically, in order to understand very briefly what a country is, population, GDP, GDP per capita, IQ, uh, anthropology, and religion. I have not completed it yet, but the, the, the religion of the population. And here, I just, I will not comment, but I will let people uh, look at the document. When there is a high IQ with low standards of living, it's probably because of political reasons, namely a population which was forced to adopt socialist policies most of the time. And when there is a, a low IQ with a very high income, it's probably due to natural resources. I will uh, show you. There are, there are countries with uh, relatively highly intelligent population from a quantitative standpoint with very low standards of living because of, because of the failure of socialism or whatever. It's not good or bad because uh, there are very wealthy population with uh, suicide rates and depression and degeneracy and decadence and there are people with low income and with strong values like family life, honor, religion, etc., etc. That's... Uh, yeah, but eventually m what most people want on this planet is better standards of living. That's why there are mass migrations and they want to go mostly in countries where where the, the average IQ is high because uh, there is a very strong correlation between average IQ and standards of living. This is simply how things are. And here, the reason why the Northeast Asians who, are, who have a very high average IQ but lower standards of living than in Europe, it's, there are various reasons. Uh, individualism, which enables economic prosperity, it's more prevalent among Europeans. Uh, they haven't suffered from uh, colonialism uh, recently, uh, the European countries, I mean, I mean, one could say that they have been colonized by, uh, by the US and by the CIA, which is true from the perspective of continental Europe, but also because uh, pff, there are many reasons, because the, 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 the level of, of really a very creative individuals is higher in Europeans for some reason, and sometimes a very small number of very creative people can bring about 
tremendous changes for the whole economy, people like Bill Gates, or Steve Jobs, etc. Because they can create through a, a new discovery or uh, Henry Ford, they can really change uh, fundamentally. But there are many other reasons. Uh, the, the, the level of individual freedom, they are more collectivist spontaneously, they are more ethnocentric. So it is good for social stability and cohesion. And the negative aspect of individualism is it brings disruption to societies. That is the problem historically for European societies. But individualism can bring about uh, change and creativity and uh, innovation, but also disruption. That's the ambiguity that uh, someone like Edward Dutton or Richard Lynn that they understand very well. But there are other reasons. Uh, pff, they had they were under under a socialist regime up until a few decades ago. Or uh, there, there are many reasons. But uh, yeah. And eventually, from a chronological perspective, in the long run. IQ and economic uh, progress or economic uh, wealth ha have to or should, but actually it's only in a chronological perspective, coincide eventually if all the institutions are made democratic. So here also there's a problem of institutions, which is partly tied to anthropology. Namely, there is a reason why Europeans spontaneously favor democratic institutions or at least institutions which favor individual liberty, not necessarily in democracies, but in aristocratic uh, liberty in the Middle Ages in England, etc., etc., or even um, a patriarchal uh, imperialist bourgeoisie like under Napoleon, uh, Napoleonian Empire, etc. But uh, it's because uh, even in, in some sort of collectivist societies, European, they still favor individual freedom to a certain extent. That's one of the, the, the factors, but yeah, uh, yeah. Of course, when one sees this, it's it's becoming clearer that, that there is a connection because here in Oceania, the two countries with the higher IQ, they have the higher standards of living, but they also have the the the, 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 the Western tradition. So it's a mixture of anthropology, but also. Uh, determination of objective of guys, which are interconnected in a way. But then prosperity brings moral decadence, etc., etc. Of course, the problems of the standards of living in Africa, eventually, uh, I will I insert this in the video because eventually I have to speak the truth, the truth of God, which is the totality. And eventually, people, they can be fooled very long but eventually they will just realize at some moment that the inequalities worldwide they are mostly caused by uh, differences it can be with with better education better food better nutrition better living condition it can be equalized to a certain extent but basically there are differences it's not racism in the sense of hatred it's simply common sense and now i'm in a in a mood where i have to speak the truth and whatever it's just common sense. When people see this, whether they are leftist, black, white, they just have to, to understand. Uh, that's, uh, if humans are too stupid to accept just that, I, can, I cannot blame them. It is, it's my responsibility. But eventually, people will have to understand that there is a reason why there are poor countries and uh, rich countries. And, uh, yeah. Yes. And of course, these numbers, they change daily. But basically, uh, one cannot think about one country without thinking about all the others. But uh, they are all interconnected because uh, yeah, the, the investors, when they know unconsciously or consciously that there is a country with a highly intelligent population, which is about to... to to, to be uh, liberated from a socialistic uh, uh, impeachment, one might say. They say, okay, in the next uh, 20 years, uh, this is will, where business will grow because the population is intelligent. Uh, now they are uh, getting rid of uh, socialist uh, restrictions, etc. And they see the, the potential for profit and investment, etc., etc. And when they see that in rich countries, the population is getting old, they are not replacing themselves naturally by having children. 
they they can anticipate okay in the next uh, uh, few decades there will be economic uh, downgrades and, and recession because there won't be enough engineers and that's what drives the, the immigration policy of a country like Germany from the consciousness of the people who are moderately intelligent but also kind of dumb because they don't see the full picture but yeah and the reason why uh, uh, these two countries uh, have lower standards than the other it's probably because uh, uh, socialism <laughs> no seriously uh, that's actually true here the nordic country uh, they have uh, the higher standards of living because historically they have found the proper balance of uh, economic liberty social cohesion uh, tolerance in a good sense which facilitates interaction without uh, too much excesses which bring about disruption but they have found the, the, the perfect balance one might say as good as it can get and these countries are on the verge of, of uh, having uh, all problems of all sorts because their ideology is contradictory because uh, i will not make the, 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 whole, the whole story but basically just to see just the, num the numbers and the colors it's really the, very simple just to to realize that here I'm, I'm starting in, in a mood of a positive nihilism namely at some moment people have to know that's not the truth because the truth is a process but that's an aspect of truth namely the reason why there are inequalities in economic standards is simply because there are inequalities uh, in people it doesn't mean here i will try to use my leftist it doesn't mean that some are better morally than the other precisely because the most intelligent can be very corrupt and the poor they can be good-hearted which is true but there is a reason why uh, the, the 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 world economic center is shifting from the us to northeast asia it's because people say ah that's the proof that uh, the racist theories are proven wrong no no they are strengthened precisely <laughs> because the racist people here's my awakening from my, my stupid former leftist self to a more intelligent right-wing perspective which is actually just realism that's what i call american common sense simply that uh, racism cannot be disproven what people call racism of course it's morally wrong and at some level i'm a christian and i have to to speak the moral truth but at some other level i'm i'm also a christian which is about to know god and, and the, the, the world of god that's uh, pagan aspect of Christianity in a way that uh, race realism it cannot be epistemologically disproven and even at some moment it cannot even be morally disproven because when there's a lie around the question of race it turns into the negative aspect of anti-racism which becomes insane and racism which becomes insane as well and the two aspects they are both negative because the truth is in the middle race realism and race realism implies the knowledge and the understanding that people are biologically determined to favor their own ethnic group and the common sense solution is that why is there madness i know why because yeah but the common sense solution is to say let people first know the truth that's the first moment but then it's difficult because there are the psychological problems which are my problems projected because uh, learning the truth is a uh, difficult difficult but eventually people will have to know uh, basically just just the colors they explain a lot basically <laughs> they explain a lot yeah that's why i'm kind of confident because eventually at some moments some people will watch my videos and they will say okay maybe we don't like what he says but actually it's very smart if we want to manipulate to deceive to use this as a as a strategic weapon against whatever to, to seduce women or to, to 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 dominate economically whatever they will use my method and, and if they think that they can use my system against another they will be deceived by the system which will turn against them because i know that my system will turn against me so if you think you can use my system against me then go ahead but i know that uh, i understand it's very difficult to control the the dialectics i understand this and yeah so you think you're smart the people who hired you 
they will do the same to you. <laughs> what do you believe in? <sighs> yeah. On a more serious level, I know that whatever doesn't kill me and whatever doesn't uh, kill my system makes me stronger. Let me strengthen my system. I know this. That, and I'm not just saying this joyfully. I just this is the fact. I mean, every contradiction that I encounter, uh, whether I, I am mentally sane or human or spirit or whatever, whatever contradiction I encounter, I will incorporate within my system to strengthen the system. That's kind of my little bit of scary self uh, on a philosophical level. Level, let me that I am building a totalitarian system, and everyone will be included eventually. That's a problem for me, but. Hopefully, uh, I'm trying to, to solve the problem, but uh, basically, my system will not be refuted. It, it will evolve and change it up, but one cannot refute being. <laughs> That's uh, <sighs> through nothing. Nothing can refute being, but being and nothing, uh, although they are different, they are kind of identical. Their process is becoming. <laughs> yeah. And I will incorporate every knowledge in my system until people understand uh, the important that's really my, my insane German self but uh, can is it possible to stop the totalitarian aspect of of God actually no I guess because God is the totality thinking itself there can be changes within the totality, but the totality cannot cease to be a totality. Yeah. And my, my difficult task is to accept the, the whole of reality. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I will make a pause. Okay. This is the view of the totality. So the, the what I've just showed uh, is the relationship between IQ, which is found in psychology, the realm of subjective regard, and economics and the interconnectedness of the two. It's really the, the basic determination. And then demographics, it's here. So there is an interconnection. And when uh, people with a high IQ have lots of children, it can be anticipated that uh, the economy will thrive because there's an interconnectedness between high intelligence and functioning social institutions. Yeah. But uh, here I'm, I'm partly becoming insane, uh, not of, because of the totalitarian aspect, because I don't know who I am talking to, so I don't know what I am supposed to say, because I don't know who knows what. Uh, so there are things which are completely self-evident for me, but that I fail to imagine that are self-evident for others. That's one of my problems. Because I, I have lived in the mind uh, of, of German metaphysician of Hegel for, for uh, two and a half years. But even if I leave aside the intellectual uh, genius, in a way, of Hegel, and just come back to the lower level, <laughs> which is... Uh, other philosophers, even to the lower level, what I call Anglo-Saxon empiricism, I realized that the kind of books that I've been reading are PhD levels, and this is what I read daily, what I've read daily for, for, for years and years. And I've realized over the past few months that the ordinary people, they don't. So... Uh, That's why I, uh, I am in a problem, but that's my problem. But basically, I just explained maybe to myself that on an empirical level, w one of the many contradictions that I have is that I, I talk about the totality, which eventually has to include everyone, past, present, uh, future, whatever, everything and everyone. Uh, but that's why I have failed over the past few months to understand, but why aren't people interested? I talk about being, I talk about becoming, I talk about the process of God. Why aren't people interested? I have deluded myself on an empirical level. No, I have understood it because people, they are not interested in metaphysical abstractions. They are interested in 
the day to day routine, namely the education, uh, sport, the economy, unemployment, uh, of course, crime, uh, a marriage, etc. That's why I, I, I've tried to communicate and now I've understood my new method of communication. As long as I can speak uh, publicly on the internet, I will alternate between really long and structured video, although I still improvise when I talk, and shorter videos in which I will not completely give up on the rigor, but eventually uh, I could talk about every topic or any topic, it's not that I would like to, simply, eventually, I have to make people interested in my system. And, and like I said, here is also my partly uh, insane self, but if I have to start to, to make a YouTube channel to talk about the history of uh, heliports uh, in uh, <laughs> Bolivia, why not? Maybe there are people interested in this. I will do this, but no, more seriously. If I have to make videos about... Uh, about marriage or about uh, I, I've already done this about soccer or about uh, about uh, about politics uh, or about uh, physics or about uh, uh, whatever about uh, about insanity but the problem I speak to myself if I just take one aspect of, of, of the whole of reality disconnected from the rest it's it, in a way, it's more intelligible than the analytical aspect, but in another way, it's unintelligible because it's not connected to the totality. That's disconnected, that's out of context, that's... Uh, It's been f five hours and five minutes. I grant myself three minutes to talk about my personal life. This afternoon, I, actually that's why I become smarter every day. I try to communicate very simply, really the, the, the lowest level of simplicity with people. And I know myself to be an embarrassment to others when I talk about philosophy. Because let us talk about embarrassment. <laughs> there are aspects well, they are kind of uh, twisted. Uh, these kind of aspects. This is what, what, what I kind of call uh, twisted embarrassment. Like it's part of my psyche on an individual level. It's kind of an embarrassment which is comical. It's twisted. It's a way, I hope so, to transcend uh, whatever. But this, this is kind of embarrassing, but it makes me laugh. And that's a way of transcending. Uh, Part of the suffering so uh, I, I could understand that people would not find this very funny there are other songs by Eminem by Rammstein and by other uh, female pop singers which are even more problematic but and which expresses uh, which express aspects of my psyche but I could understand and I wouldn't blame people but when I talk about concepts and eventually at some level they are re related but when I talk about science philosophy logic and when i'm looked at at some sort of a, as some sort of a freak although i try to simplify to the utmost of course i, I am frustrated and that's a, an, an, another which is a, a reflection of myself that i haven't made peace with or whatever but basically there are moments when i'm just frustrated against who not against the others but against maybe against whatever I am on, a, on an epistemological level because here is where I, Zizek when he talks about a Hegel as an alien it kind of appeases uh, <laughs> my soul maybe because to be to be considered I will not complain I just talk to myself and I explain my psyche to be considered as some sort of a, of a freak just for trying to to think not even rigorously because here i am serious what i've been doing in my video it's not really serious and here i'm not in the mood to say oh i will try to outsmart hegel because really the standards of hegel in terms of intellectual rigor they are really high and what i do is just 
here I'm not I'm not uh, joking in a sense <laughs> maybe <laughs> no seriously <laughs> Seriously, I would like to, to speak honestly <laughs> to God about philosophy. I will talk to God. <laughs> Read the standards of Hegel. I do not understand how it is possible. The intellectual, I do not understand how it can emerge. And in this sense, when I say, I know sometimes I say it's not rigorous. I've, I've come to say this as some sort of a joke. But actually, I really think at some level... <laughs> God is playing a trick on me, but at some level, of course, I, I've come to, to, because I'm becoming partly insane, to say it's not rigorous in some sort of a... <laughs> comical aspect, but there is an aspect of me that I will not give up on, namely, I am genuinely... I, I would like to understand how can the the systematicity, the rigor of, of the writings of Hegel, how is it possible? And in this sense, when I say no one can, I'm not, uh, but no one can compare with the writings of Hegel in terms of, of, of seriousness, I really mean this because I haven't read the science of logic for many, many months, but I read sometimes the shorter logic and even the shorter logic, which is really simplified compared with what the writings of Hegel can do. It's really simplified, but it's nonetheless very rigorous. It's, it's logically derived, interconnected. And here, I cannot help but feel a admiration and in this sense what I'm doing with my system here it's it's not serious really in the sense that I just collected uh, random references I, I spend uh, I spend 20 seconds on, on some uh, videos it's just that okay I need to illustrate so I will pick up a random song which pops in my mind but here I just copied the categories of the, it's the, the, the result of weeks and months of work, but I just copied the categories which are already available in the work of Hegel. The, 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 the formal aspect, first, it's not very appealing, but okay, it has taken me many hours. But my commentary, I just speak randomly. It's the fruit of years of study of Hegel and, and of other uh, books and etc. But this is not, when I say it's not really serious. Uh, I mean this in the sense that <sighs> the Anglo-Saxons, they are serious in terms of intellectual rigor, really on the formal aspect. I mean, the good books written by intelligent what I call Anglo-Saxon, they are mostly ethnically Anglo-Saxon, but actually it's a, a method, it's, it's found in, in Jewish intellectuals, and, and eventually it's universal, but the Anglo-Saxon, they do it better than the others. I know I've read a lot of their books. Even the, the works of the CIA, uh, it's, it's really good, uh, yeah. So there is rigor and systematicity, but it's always on a strictly limited topic, that's the first, or when it encompasses uh, the data about global, uh, like uh, the, the, the data about IQ or GDP or the, the works of Richard Lean, uh, Tatu Van Anen, etc., etc. It's global, but it's strictly formal. Namely, there is just the, the, the Verstandish moment, namely the abstraction of uh, uh, economic or uh, cognitive determination or so sociological statistics, but here, I'm really serious, the works of German philosophers, Kant, Fichte in his good writings, Schelling. Schelling is kind of already not serious enough for the German family. It's kind of the, the kid going wrong. Like you are not respecting the, the seriousness of the German family, the metaphysical family. You are going astray a little bit. Be careful. 
<laughs> yeah, but no, seriously, this the, the read the, the intellectual production of the German philosophers. Culminating with Hegel, uh, it's this is really the work of God. Uh, probably uh, God speaking as a, as a logician. That's probably the science of logic. I don't know because I probably will never read the book. But here, uh, maybe here is my my uh, my evil uh, intellectual self. Maybe sometimes I just like to to respect the the intellectual achievement. While knowing that, uh, yeah. And my question is, how has it come into being? Whatever. So I've been talking for 10 minutes about logic. So in this sense, maybe I am completely insane because uh, Here I am I'm talking seriously. There is an aspect of me, the psychological self, who would like to imitate Hegel because the child who wants to impress the father or the, the, the teenager who wants to impress the hero. But on a more serious level, there is simply respect for the intellectual achievement and and simply really what I'm saying, really the works of Hegel on a formal aspect, the, the logic and even the, the entire encyclopedia, it's it's just serious. Maybe the only serious thinker, maybe he thinks about the totality in, in its conceptual unfolding. It's not just serious. There are uh, amazing uh, aspects uh, wi within this. That's even more amazing. But for, from a strictly intellectual standpoint, the, the logic, the encyclopedia, here, I will, I will be honest uh, while I can speak honestly, but how uh, how can I know the empirical storyline the, the, the official but how can the writings officially of a 19th century German philosopher be so well structured as to encompass the world 200 years later and how can it be so brilliant I might say that in a way here I will say what I think on an intellectual level the fact that the writings of Hegel in a chronological perspective they date from 200 years ago they can fit the structure of reality in the 21st century that's already that's amazing but what's even more amazing is that such an amazement, no one else noticed this, namely the people like, like Zizek, like, like uh, footnotes to play, like Matthew, the intelligent, the intelligent, here are just an example, but there are many older the Hegelian scholars. How can they fail to see that the, the structure of the encyclopedia, even I understand why they would disagree with the magical, uh, alchemical aspect. I understand that I am the negative, so eventually only I can understand. But what I don't understand here is the scholars, how can they fail to understand that the proper way of knowing anything, whether one is a Hegelian or not, or uh, whatever, is simply to, to have a view of the totality. Zizek is the only one that, that seems to understand uh, vaguely uh, vaguely the, 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 what Hegel was talking about, basically. Yeah. Okay, so now I will comment briefly the logic and then uh, I will upload the video, I will go to sleep and I will keep working uh, tomorrow. Maybe the day after, maybe. So here I will not comment. I will just show the categories which are found at most levels of being. 
that people use unconsciously. Sein, da sein, für sich sein, it's abstract, uh, negation, concrete. But simply, uh, I will briefly comment while I show the, the categories. Uh, just the categories of quantity. It's so enlightening, one might say, just to, to read the logic of quantity. Or, or one and many repulsion and attraction, when one understands the concepts, the categories, the category of measure, it's so enlightening to, to all aspects of being that I'm amazed that, that the others, uh, the intelligent scholars, uh, Hegelian scholars, haven't thought about this. Just to read Hegel, basically. Just to read Hegel. And here I can make a comment. Equality, inequality, and comparison. People complain about inequalities, and it's understandable, but precisely the study of logic shows that inequality is a relation of the, the different uh, things, one might say, which are unequal, and therefore they are in relation, so they, they have an aspect of equality, because they, they can be compared. When we say there are inequalities between men and women in terms of uh, GDP per capita, in terms of income, the comparison is income, and there are inequalities, but the fact that men and women are compared in the realm of inco income is already a proof that at some level they are already equal. The same goes with race differences, the fact that there are the, the denunciation of income inequalities between blacks, whites, Hispanics, uh, Jews, Asians, etc. Of course, there are inequality, but the fact that the comparison is made is a proof that the idea of equality is already present. Uh, in ancient Rome, uh, people didn't talk about the inequality of revenue between the, 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 the aristocrats and the... The, the, the patricians and the, the, the slaves, or even some at uh, the, the earlier time, the, the, the patricians and the plebeians. And when they started to talk about the inequalities in law or economics, I mean, they didn't, uh, as we do now, but it was already a proof that they were equal. So inequality is the first moment of equality, eventually, because they are worthy of being compared. That's why people who say, uh, whatever, but yeah. It's just an illustration. The whole and the parts. Just really, uh, but das Wahre ist das Ganze. The truth is the whole, the totality. It's simply a formal method of knowledge. To talk about anything at all, one has to take all the parts of the totality into account. This is just the formal way of knowing. It's really that simple. since I'm talking to myself, I will talk about Stella, the difference between the love that I felt for my teenage romance and the love that I experienced uh, for Stella when I discovered her is that I thought, okay, Stella, I can love you perfectly. Namely, I, 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 I kind of, when I discovered you uh, in June or uh, May and June 2018, I said to myself, okay, I love every aspect of you. Knowing, uh, I know, uh, I knew enough uh, the kind of twisted and dark and yeah, but I said to myself, okay, this is the kind of 
well, the kind of girl, uh, because uh, yeah, but the kind of woman that I can, I can, lo I could love you perfectly. And I think the same thing when I'm inspired about Caroline. But perfect love uh, is kind of difficult because within the totality there are parts which are, uh, yeah. But as I grew older, I said to myself, okay. Uh, I could love you perfectly. That's what I thought. Because uh, even your dark aspects, they kind of, uh, if I'm even new to laugh, they kind of turn me on. If I'm in a less pleasant mood, they say, okay, uh, they can be tolerated within the totality. That's what I thought, basically. That's, that's the ambiguity of perfect love. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a mood to laugh, but perfect love, the good thing is that it's love and it's perfect. But uh, of course, uh, yeah, the problem, the problem is that uh, pff, there are moments really where, uh, well, <sighs> yeah. But somehow, Stella, if you somehow, somewhere someone watches this, there was a moment when, when I discovered you that I said to myself, I, I was discovering Hegel as well, but I said to myself, you are the kind of, of girl, uh, because uh, you were, uh, what, uh, 16 years old and I was, uh, I was younger as well. But basically you are the kind of woman because you haven't changed, I guess, or maybe you have, and that's the fun of you that you change always and remain the same. I don't know that I could love perfectly. Yeah. And the problem that I have is that I've realized that you are an idea, Stella. Uh, that's complicated, but uh, when I when I didn't understand or when I forgot or I don't know, I said to myself, "Yeah, you are. Maybe you are my perfect love." And that's the reason why sometimes imperfect love, when it's just the the. the, the the, 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 just really the, 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 the tender aspects might, might be better, at least uh, from a perspective, because uh, there's just the good side and in perfect love there is a, well, there is a Lana Del Rey and Marilyn Manson, Eminem and Lady Gaga. I cannot make things uh, simpler. But that's why the uh, that's why Eminem and Lady Gaga, they are the perfect artists. Really, they are perfection in the realm of pop culture because they, they, are, they are perfect. But perfection implies, well, moments which, uh, well, within the, to here I'm, I'm speaking, uh, try to, within the totality, uh, <laughs> this is what makes the totality perfect, but, there are songs by Eminem. The, the reason that what I'm trying to say to myself is that, okay, you made whatever, 150 songs. Maybe five of them are really dubious. Five out of 150, okay, on a quantitative verhältnis. Uh, that's pretty good, but uh, yeah. Yeah. He says somewhere, I gave you nothing less than perfectness. Whatever, whatever. That's why I make videos in English as well. I have moments I've said, uh, do I have to speak uh, in French to make my videos popular? I would make them popular if I spoke French, but actually 
all my cultural references, uh, they are American, all my intellectual life is Anglo-Saxon, all the people that I would like to talk to uh, peacefully, or at least I would like them to watch my video, they are American or Anglo-Saxon. Uh, publicly, I would speak English uh, until I can, I no longer can, and I will speak French uh, in one way or another, and whatever. The story that I tell myself, I tell myself stories to try to remain balanced. Some of the stories that I tell myself is that the positive and the negative, uh, uh, if there is negativity, there has to be the positive. Uh, I use the quantitative fairness to try to bear the, the burden of the really uh, uh, dubious uh, things in existence. I say, okay, quantitatively it exists, but it's limited. Then uh, I use, uh, what do I use? That's why I study logic, <laughs> to, to save uh, my sanity, maybe. <laughs> Which sometimes has the opposite effect. I don't know. <laughs> I also, yeah, Hegel says there is good uh, in, uh, in knowledge and in, 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 in the process, so that gives me confidence. <laughs> When I, when I do stupid things, I say, okay, that's a reason playing a trick on me. I cannot compete with reason. Maybe I'm the idiot who gets manipulated. <sighs> yeah. So this is the kind of story that I tell myself, basically. And uh, yeah. So that was uh, the view of the totality, the formal view. And yeah, and also the story that I tell myself is that I am planting the seeds of light if or when I can no longer communicate publicly or if I really, uh, I don't know, if I really become insane. Uh, I will have planted the seeds of light. I will continue to do so as long as I, as long as I can. And, uh, I understand that people will not spontaneously watch a five uh, 30 minutes uh, long, 5 hours, 30 minutes long video, that's why uh, my my next videos, I guess, uh, will be shorter. And then I will alternate as long as I, I don't know, because I have so many contradictions, but I will alternate as long as I can make videos publicly, I will alternate between long videos where I comment if it has to happen, the, the, the whole process, which it will be even more rigorous, my explanations will be even better, uh, or the phenomenology will more names, uh, more interactions, whatever. And if I can, I will make uh, shorter videos, which are still long, like uh, at least 30 minutes, but even I will go try to, to go even lower if I can, uh, like uh, 15 minutes, because yeah. But the problem that I have is that I cannot express remotely even my truth in in uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes maybe i could but uh, it would be misunderstood but if it's longer it's, it will not be understood at all so i have this contradiction that's why i study logic to try to find uh, the unity of form and content uh, balance which is a proper measure but uh, whatever whatever I try to mix uh, Kant and Evola, namely to have this some sort of a principle, of an inner principle. I I, uh, I do things my way. <laughs> I I share my light uh, publicly on the internet, privately with the people that I encounter. I try to obey certain moral rules. That sounds uh, kind of ironic, but. And uh, when I encounter a contradiction, well, I will, uh, I will do what I think is correct, knowing that uh, whatever. But I try to to act according to a law which might be universalized. 
I cannot be a Keynesian completely because it's too difficult and because I'm maybe too wicked because uh, if it were easy to be a Keynesian, uh, we wouldn't have all these problems, I guess. But uh, yeah, I have over the past few days, I've understood, okay, uh, my attempt to control the mind of others for their own good is bound to fail because they have to, to have the proper training and uh, so I will I will speak with myself or with a, a random individual. Maybe I will speak to people eventually, but I will speak just to myself. I will maybe I will comment the news. I've um, I've already started doing this to collect the data. And now now I will conclude. But the purpose of 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 showing the formal aspect is simply to understand the daily news. And, and the daily occurrences of life. <sighs> really? Because here it's an, the example of one country, but eventually all countries can be divided as such. Uh, and um, yeah. I will not rewatch. I mean, I will not uh, modify the video. I said what I said. When or whatever, people will judge me for speaking alone in front of a computer, getting a little bit insane when I'm get getting heated up in a way. And uh, whatever. I would just make a remark. But people, um, I know this because of empirical conversation, they experience what I call my system, which includes the totality of, of all knowledge eventually, as some sort of a, of a violation of their personal individuality and, and sense of, of, of uh, sense of self and I can understand because but actually what I understand is that science ordinary science is simply universal knowledge and the scientists who study physics they know about every human from a physical standpoint they don't have to know them empirically but those who understand the laws of, of gravity or the laws of anatomy or physiology in a more uh, biological sense, they, they understand the physical determinations of all humans as physical bodies. He who understands physiognomy or, uh, or um, anatomy, he understands the, 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 the body of all humans from an anatomical or physiological standpoint. And the humans, they don't. He who understands psychology, he understands the psychology of all humans, not in their singular self, but in their universal and eventually particular selves. And uh, the humans, they do not understand. And the same goes for every science. Namely, the, the scientist in ordinary sense is the person who understands the universal and therefore he can deduce the particular and the singulars. And the singulars, they do not know this and they experience this as some sort of a, a violation of, of their individual freedom when a scientist tells them, I understand you and, and you can't refute me. And I understand why it's kind of problematic and even traumatic in a way. Because one loses one's self, sense of self. And I don't like this, but I'm trying to do this to, to abolish uh, evil in a way. And, and that, that's where the misunderstanding comes from. Namely, when a scientist, and here any empirical scientist, could say to me or to anyone else, I understand some of your determinations more than you understand yourself. A psychologist, a psychoanalyst. Uh, every scientist, because I'm not an expert in any topic, he could say to me, I understand you, some of your aspects, more than you understand yourself. And I would say, yes, you're right. And I would experience this as some sort of a, a problem because I would say, I don't like you that you control my mind in a way. And I understand. But precisely that's my way of growing in wisdom. I have to, to accept that the others will react negatively, not only about my inherent negativity, uh, the dubious aspect of existence, but they will react neg negatively for even what I thought would be good. 
And that's something that I am starting to learn and I have to adapt to that. Maybe I did not expect others to react negatively to what I thought was good. But now I understand that it's kind of kind of partly traumatic, but actually it's just science. I know it sounds very bad to say so, but actually I, I understand maybe basically when another says, I understand you more than you understand yourself, it can be experienced as a sense of loss of a self in a sense and uh, that we are being robbed away of our personality uh, but uh, yeah i understand partly uh, theoretically at least uh, but here it's common uh, knowledge that actually people have forgotten or have never been aware of namely that i repeat but just newton officially uh, four centuries ago he knew potentially more about humans as physical objects, the laws of bodily movement and mechanics and gravitation and stuff, more than most humans except a few brilliant scientists like Einstein and the theoretical physicists. He, he, he knew more about all humans as physical objects than all humans because he understood the universal of uh, the movements of, of, of uh, physical objects. And the same goes for uh, every great scientist physics, uh, biology, anthropology, psychology, uh, etc. in all the fields of sciences, economics, sociology, politics, etc. etc. And um, eventually maybe it, it, it is good because I know that we men, they like to say, oh, he understands me so well. <laughs> yeah. But it can be felt as some sort of a negative uh, experience when someone says, I understand you more than you understand yourself. So in a way, I, I control you partly. That's really the, the, the negative aspect. But uh, yeah, I have to learn to accept that the others will react negatively to what I thought would be good. That's part of the learning curve. And I have only my own uh, wisdom, I guess. Because here I will, I will talk just the, the women that I talk about, I understand them so well because I've spent so much time listening to them. But I can understand that if I talk and I thought about doing this, if I talk to them directly and said, I, I know everything about you, I mean, not empirically, but your, your fundamental philosophical determinations, they would experience this as some sort of a, yes, yeah, some sort of a, negative and here it makes me suffer namely when i when i hurt others while trying to do good i suffer so i have to reconsider my worldview and i've uh, i've understood this over the past couple of weeks so yeah but eventually i will conclude on this but my system will encompass and incorporate uh, all the determinations whether i as an empirical individual work and keep working on this or whether the process become autonomous in some way spiritually or collectively or whatever this is simply a, the formal presentation of the totality of being yeah i will end the video now and uh, start the upload and keep uh, keep working after having slept a while and I will try to keep sharing my light. That's the story that I tell myself.